and friends from different parts of the world. Today is May Day. On behalf of the International Workers Committee and on my own behalf, I am N. Vasudevan, greeting you from India. I am one of the two coordinators of the International Workers Committee, IWC. Comrade Daniel Blackstein from Paris, He's another coordinator, and he will be conducting this meeting together in this session. The last open world conference against war, exploitation, and precarious labor, organized by the International Workers Committee in 2016 in Mumbai, was attended by more than 400 trade union and political activists from Asia, Africa, Europe, Latin America, the USA, and Australia. I am happy to say that many participants in this meeting were present at the Open World Conference held in India. Convention friends, on this day, on the International Labor Day, Workers of the world paid tribute to the martyrs of hair market in Chicago who laid down their lives for the creation of eight hour working day. Workers in all countries hold the flags dipped in the blood of the working class heroes. For the last 134 years, on May Day, workers have held rallies and meetings in the streets in all countries, in cities and towns, raising their demands and making declarations to resolutely march forward to approve the capitalist system of exploitation and create a new social order based on justice, fraternity, and equality. Today, the world is under grip of COVID-19 and workers are forced to depart from the 134-year-old tradition, holding rallies and meetings. Workers are under self-quarantine. On this May Day, workers everywhere are confined to their homes. They are under lockdown. They are asked to adhere to physical distance, to maintain social distancing. 
in the name of fighting the spreading spree of the dangerous coronavirus. Coronavirus has created conditions of this nature, which we, or our forefathers in the past generations, have never heard of or experienced. COVID-19 pandemic has already claimed over 100,000 lives world over. The disease is not under control. There is no end in sight. Today's May Day meeting is unique. Despite heavy odds, workers and political activists from over 45 countries have decided to rally together through this online meeting in the true sense of international working class solidarity to raise a voice of protest against the perpetual negligence meted out to the toiling masses, neglect in providing human conditions of existence, food, shelter, education, and basic health care. The callousness of the ruling classes has come out in the open as never before. COVID-19 has torn asunder the pretensions of the ruling classes that they have taken steps to protect people at large. All Benelier declarations by G7 and G20 heads of governments have turned into worthless piece of paper. People in developed, developed as well as underdeveloped countries are under prolonged lockdown. People are dying in thousands and they are scared to move out of their homes. Many in the underdeveloped countries do not have proper shelters. Those who have no homes are left to meet their fate as it comes. Yet, the ruling classes shamelessly boast of their success in ensuring social distancing under authoritarian lockdowns, claiming they are doing so in the interest of people to save their lives. This all-round depravity is what capitalism has given to the people. Capitalism has given birth to many viruses in the past too. We have seen SARS, anthrax, bird flu, Nipah, Ebola, HIV, AIDS, so on and so forth. Many lives were lost. Past viruses and epidemics and loss of lives did not bother the ruling classes to take steps with a view to provide health care for the common people. They pretended to view and sympathize with the suffering masses during the crisis. And when the crisis is passed, then continue to do business as usual. The experience of Spanish flu of 1918-1920 is before us. Spanish flu wiped out one third of world population. Even such a calamity did not have any impact on capitalist rulers. They consistently reduced public health expenditure and promoted private five-star hospital facilities for few, gave impetus to capitalist control, pharmaceutical industry, maximizing profits and strengthening their stranglehold on the society. This Spanish flu and capitalist callousness can act as an example and experience. COVID-19 and this universal virulence must act as a lesson for the world working class, not to allow the exploiters to get away with hollow promises again. Undoubtedly, COVID-19 has topped the list of viruses in causing damage simultaneously in all countries, destroying normal life and devastating economies at world scale. In India, people face a double tragedy. For some, belonging to higher class, middle class, those having regular earnings, lockdown means remaining indoor. They are concerned only about not getting the disease. India has 450 million working people. 
many are daily wage earners they are in precarious category a huge section is migrant labor they are in having no means of subsistence in the villages workers have moved to far distant location in search of livelihood for the migrant worker the worry is about earning an income for themselves for their survival and also for those family members living far away now under the lockdown they have to fight against the dangerous corona virus for the migrant labor in indian cities particularly in cities like mumbai and delhi where infections are rising every day following the stipulated physical distance is an impossible proposition as 5 to 10 people live in such subhuman conditions sharing a cage like accommodation without running water and toilets washing hands frequently by using alcohol based sanitizer is a big joke for those having no income whatsoever getting next meal is their only consideration hence their concern is to get back home in far away village to be with their loved ones they are scared the choice before them is death due to hunger plus corona infection in the cities where they live or likelihood of survival in the village under the care of the loved ones loved ones migrant and precarious workers do not have any health coverage indian trade unions have pleaded with the government to arrange transportation for workers to reach the villages unfortunately the government at the center refused the plea of the trade unions to allow transport to take workers to the villages however the government took steps to bring standard indians from abroad and also during the lockdown arranged transport for children of the affluent families to move from one city to another mayor labor did not deserve any empathy the lockdown was proclaimed with four hour notice on march 24 and mayor labor as also others stuck in far away places have been forced to remain where they are poor workers are without proper shelter food money at their locations darkness of future fear of corona and helplessness compel hundreds of thousands of migrants with families including children to take to streets and began walking towards their villages hundreds of miles away visuals on the tv screens were heart rending it took 15 to 30 days for some to reach a destination reports say nearly 198 workers died in the process india is under lockdown since march 24 comparative death toll in india is low it is about 1000 but the sad fact is only a minuscule 200000 tests have been conducted of a 1.3 billion population low rate of tests speak volumes about the lower infection figures in india labs for tests a few tests cost about 65 dollar which is very high for ordinary indians there is utter confusion about the availability of hospital beds icus and ventilators plus masks gloves and ppes personal protective equipment people are compelled to work without proper ppes doctors nurses paramedical staff including policemen have lost lives in many parts of the country the trade unions in india have come out in support of migrant workers demands but the enormity of the crisis has exposed the limitations of trade unions however the crisis has provided an opportunity for trade unions to understand the hitherto unknown magnitude of migration of people 
and their pathetic conditions at work sites and the enormity of precarious labor in India. While announcing the nationwide lockdown, Prime Minister Modi had appealed to the employers not to retain workers during lockdown and pay full wages to all workers. Employees welcomed the appeal. Soon thereafter, the employees have approached the Supreme Court of India for an order to nullify government notifications, asking employees to pay wages to workers. Unions are now fighting in the court, pleading for payment to workers. It did not take too long for the pronounced sympathy of the Prime Minister for workers to evaporate. Government is the largest employer in India. As an ideal employer, the government should have set an example by issuing an order to pay wages to employees during lockdown. Initial doing so, the government announced its decision to reduce wages, the inner relevance, and pension of its own employees. This duplicity is not accidental. It is a clear signal to the employees in the corporate sector to provide evidence to the Supreme Court when their case comes up for hearing. Thus, in the Supreme Court, the trade unions will have to struggle in convincing the court to give effect to government notification sanctioning payment to private sector workers under lockdown. As if this is not enough, some state governments have issued orders to increase working hours from 8 to 12. There is a move to ban union formation as well. All these are intended to benefit employees in private sector. Under the cover of lockdown and the fight to control COVID-19, the federal government is planning to simply change 44 labor laws into four wage codes and implement them at the earliest. Throughout COVID-19 tragedy and lockdown, some people have worked. They include police and security personnel, doctors, nurses, paramedical staff in hospitals and outside, ambulance staff, workers producing medicines to combat diseases, workers ensuring electric supply, water, fuel, and gas in sanitation, so on and so forth. The essential lower rung of workers were neglected in India. Many were without unions. They have risked their lives while performing their duties. Who is responsible for the coronavirus has become a bitter dispute. There is a blame game in circulation in all countries. The US has blamed China. Reports are floating that the US, Germany, Israel, etc. have plans to oppose the International Court of Justice, claiming compensation of $160 trillion from China, holding China responsible for allegedly not disclosing details of the disease started in Wuhan. Capitalist countries have absorbed of their responsibility in providing treatment and for the loss of lives in their countries. On the one hand, anti-socialist propaganda has become virulent, and on the other, media, print as well as electronic and social media, promoted by the corporate corporates in countries like India. Coronavirus spread has been attributed to Muslims and Islam. We know science would triumph in the ultimate analysis and COVID-19 would come under control. Lockdowns will be lifted. It will be business as usual for the ruling classes. But the virus of hatred between communities would continue unabated. Indian economy was in doldrums even before COVID-19. Absence of purchasing power brought production of all items down. The unemployment rate crossed its 45-year-old peak. Mid-2019, people were in the streets demanding constitutionally guaranteed rights. College and university students, youth, women were in the forefront against citizenship discrimination and bifurcation of Kashmir, violating constitutional provisions. They came under brutal police attack. Many liberals were jailed for speaking the truth. Ruling classes everywhere have more or less 
identify their enemies. Socialists, secularists, progressives, intellectuals, leftists, human rights activists, and class conscious terrorists. Workers cannot allow business as usual. Then what's the way out? People's power alone can reverse tragedy. For this to become a reality in India as elsewhere in the world, working class would have to emerge as a class for itself. And what is more, to rise above divisive values in order to reconstruct a solid organization nationally and internationally. Comrades, on this May Day, let us resolve to work in that direction. COVID-19 should not be allowed to be used as a means to get additional dividends to the perpetrators of exploitation. Let us try to overcome our weakness in order to strengthen our fight against exploitation, injustice, and all shades of unfairness. We are in a world different from 1920s. Spanish flu of 1920 and the enormous loss of Now, an almost loss of human life. To ward off a future epidemic like COVID-19, people must have proper jobs with decent wages, houses, hospitals, schools, healthcare in place. Profit-greedy capitalism, except offering sympathy in terms, has failed in taking any concrete measures in the larger interests of people. Public interests must rise above selfish private motives. World working class has a role to play. That is what has brought us together in this May Day rally. Hence, on this May Day, we say in one voice, down with capitalism, down with exploitation, down with war, long live socialism. Let me conclude my introductory words with a slogan given to the workers and people of India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh by the legendary Indian revolutionary and freedom fighter Bhagat Singh who was just 23 years when he and two of his comrades were hanged in Lahore Central Jail in 1932 by the British imperialists. Bhagat Singh, Bhagat Singh was inspired by the Bolshevik Revolution and had a clear vision of free India. In his writings, he exhorted workers, peasants, and youths to put an end to the system of exploitation in all its manifestation and own the means of production. He said, it makes no difference whether the rulers are white, brown, or blacks. Workers and peasants and youth in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, through, though divided by borders, even today are inspired with a slogan with which Bhagat Singh went to gallows. Inkunab Sindhabad means long live revolution. Formation pens. May Day greetings to you once again. Long live May Day. Long live international working class solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Vasudevan. The first speakers are coming from the United States of America, from Argentina, Korea, Belgium, and Greece. COVID-19 and the impact on the American working class. COVID-19 took the country by storm. This pandemic exposed the weak underbelly of capitalist America. This virus revealed the importance of certain sectors of the American working class 
and the lack of economic advancement available to them. At the same time, capital continues to concentrate amongst the ruling elite at the expense of the masses of the people. Who knew that cashiers, warehouse workers, and delivery persons would become recognized as essential workers? And how long will that recognition last? This pandemic shows just how important these workers are to our society. They suffer under less than a living wage. The faceless cashiers and warehouse workers at Amazon, Walmart, Kroger's, and other enterprises around the country. America, with thousands of missiles, drones, and spy satellites, could not provide sufficient personal protective equipment for its nurses and doctors, simple disposable masks, gowns, and gloves. Most of the major hospitals are now part of what are identified as healthcare systems. With the mergers of hospitals and clinics, healthcare became a super profit center without creating better outcomes for the patients. In the decades prior to COVID-19, hospitals were closed, resulting in massive decreases in available beds, less nurses and aides, nursing homes with minimalist staffing. All of this to increase profits for the few. COVID-19 has also revealed the reality to working people that the system has failed them. We now see a militancy amongst workers at United Parcel Service, demonstrations by hospital staff and other essential workers, all seeking better working conditions in what is now a more deadly workplace. COVID-19 has revealed once again the failure by the political party to pass a stimulus bill that benefits working class people instead of a massive bailout of the ruling class and corporations. Just two years ago, trillion dollar tax cuts were given to the ruling class and they are still in need of a bailout. Really? Capitalism is dying. Organized labor must recognize that it is time to separate from the parties of the bosses. Labor must begin to mobilize its members and invest in organizing these essential non-union workers. These workers are exhibiting great degrees of bravery and militancy in the face of their experience with the wanton disregard for their health and safety. Organized labor in the developed world must recognize that globalization means if it happens here, it will happen there. We must begin to use our resources to not only organize locally, but to organize globally. What resources one might be tempted to ask? The reallocation of millions of dollars wasted on political parties each year. That money must be used to organize these essential workers who are unorganized. Too many of these essential workers make less than $15 per hour. For example, in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, and other major cities, a living wage is closer to $30 or more. In one of the poorest states, $15 per hour will still leave you poor in Tupelo, Mississippi. We must organize to fight. La situación de Argentina no es diferente a la de muchos países denominados economías emergentes. Países vulnerados en sus derechos, pauperizados en sus economías y sometidos a los designios del imperialismo financiero internacional. Desde el punto de vista económico, Argentina está sometido a la carga de una abultada deuda externa que alcanza el 98% de su PBI. Desde la dictadura militar, primera responsable del fenomenal endeudamiento hasta hoy, Argentina ha transitado un vaivén que va del pago incondicional de la deuda a la negociación con más o menos quita de intereses o de capital, pero siempre sobre la base del pago de la deuda. A esta altura resulta obvio para todo el pueblo argentino que la deuda externa es espuria que ya se la ha pagado decenas de veces, que sobre todo en los últimos cuatro años del gobierno Macri, todo lo que se ha tomado de deuda externa, pública, se ha fugado al exterior. La única solución para que este tema eh, se resuelva es el no 
pago de la deuda externa, rechazarla por ilegítima, ilegal, inmoral e inhumana y proceder a juzgar a los responsables de la toma de la deuda y de la fuga de capitales. La cuestión de la deuda repercute en el día a día del pueblo argentino, sometiéndolo cada vez más a profundos ajustes fiscales, mientras las grandes capitales concentrados se benefician y hacen negocios endeudando al país y fugando el dinero. Desde el punto de vista social, el gobierno Macri dejó un escenario de un 40% de la población bajo el nivel de pobreza, 9% en situación de indigencia y una tasa de desempleo superior al 10%. El gobierno actual recurre a paliativos en forma de asistencias alimentarias a los más necesitados y alguna ayuda económica a las pequeñas y medianas empresas. Mientras tanto, las grandes empresas como Techín acaban de despedir más de, más de 1.500 trabajadores. Desde el punto de vista político, el mayor problema que enfrentamos en Argentina es la falta de un partido que organice a la clase trabajadora. La característica policlasista del peronismo y la profunda inserción que tiene en la población hace que desde 1945 hasta la fecha el gobierno del país quede a cargo de tanto en tanto de algunas de las diferentes versiones que el peronismo ha podido expresar. Desde el neoliberalismo más ortodoxo de Carlos Menem hasta las versiones con un socialmente más popular y económicamente más keynesiano, como el caso de Néstor y Cristina Kirchner. Las condiciones objetivas para un profundo cambio político y social están maduras. Un estallido social es previsible en el mediano plazo. La cuestión es quién podrá conducirlo. Hola, soy un Korean activista. Soy grateful to be able to join the World Walkers Online Rally for May Day Struggle. Your initiative gives a shout out for defending Korean workers' interests. Like other countries, COVID-19 has been hit a lot to Korea, especially as for irregular workers, small business owners, sectors either. Roughly 1.6 million Korean workers are suffering from unemployment or unpaid leave and worsening working condition. Already, many companies are likely to lay up unorganized workers, especially for unorganized workers, and they are deteriorating the working condition, especially for the non-organized sectors and small-sized sectors. The Korean working class in Korea will also fight back for the liberation of the oppressed, exploited workers from all over the world. And you are sending full support your struggles for defending workers' gains actually so far. Thank you. Bonjour camarades. Je m'appelle Camille, je suis un travailleur infirmier du service public hospitalier en Belgique francophone. Depuis le début de ma carrière, j'ai vu sévir au sein de l'hôpital public les politiques austéritaires qui ont dégradé son fonctionnement et déshumanisé les soins apportés à la population. Les restrictions budgétaires imposées par les gouvernements néolibéraux ont conduit les directions hospitalières et leurs managers à imposer au personnel hospitalier une méthode simple et unique, c'est-à-dire faire toujours plus avec toujours moins. Derrière un discours de modernité et de responsabilité budgétaire se cache la volonté de démunir l'hôpital public de tous ses moyens pour le fragiliser et le livrer à la voracité du marché. Déficit chronique de personnel ou de matériel, explosion des heures de travail, réquisition permanente, impossibilité de soigner chacun comme nous le pourrions. Les conséquences de ces politiques sont dramatiques. Des soignants et des médecins dévoués corps et âme à leur mission de santé publique abandonnent leur carrière, s'épuisent à la tâche ou, dans le pire des cas, se suicident. Nous ne pouvons pas continuer ainsi. Par leurs syndicats ou par des comités d'action, les travailleurs de la santé s'organisent pour porter leurs revendications en Belgique ou en France, par des mouvements de grève qui parfois durent plusieurs mois, par des campagnes de défense du service public hospitalier ou par l'organisation d'assemblées générales. Le monde de l'enseignement public est lui aussi l'objet d'assauts répétés. C'est ce que j'ai pu vérifier au cours des conversations entretenues avec des militants du comité Unité en Belgique. Ils se battent actuellement contre une réforme de l'enseignement nommée ironiquement « Pacte d'excellence », dans un contresens digne d'un roman de George Orwell. L'excellence ici est le nom de la restriction budgétaire, de la casse du statut des enseignants et de l'instauration du règne de l'arbitraire dans les écoles. Dans tous ces secteurs, les dégradations induites par le système capitaliste tournent à la catastrophe pendant l'épidémie de coronavirus. 
Dans les hôpitaux, c'est le manque de lits et de médicaments pour soigner, la contamination et la mort de soignants par le manque de protection, et parfois la terrible décision à prendre pour les médecins de savoir qui sera soigné. Pour les enseignants, c'est la mise en place d'une méthode d'enseignement effrayante, l'e-learning. Nos, en nos enfants sont laissés responsables de leur propre éducation, loin de leurs camarades, leurs professeurs et de la pratique collective de l'apprentissage qui nous est précieuse. C'est pour cette raison que j'ai répondu à l'appel lancé par le comité Unité pour une réquisition des entreprises et de l'appareil de productif industriel, ainsi que des 50 milliards d'euros offerts aux banques par le gouvernement fédéral belge. Cet argent doit servir prioritairement à refinancer les hôpitaux, à produire des masques et des respirateurs artificiels, à organiser le dépistage de la population, mais aussi à interdire les licenciements et les suppressions de postes, à maintenir 100% des salaires et des allocations et à organiser la protection des plus vulnérables. Les travailleurs doivent rester vigilants, car derrière un discours de solidarité, de dignité humaine et de discrédit du néolibéralisme, l'union sacrée proclamée par les partis de gauche comme de droite prend les formes d'une alliance pour sauver les banques et les états capitalistes. La réalité, c'est que les capitalistes sont toujours au pouvoir et feront tout pour y rester. Ils finiront par exiger que les travailleurs remboursent jusqu'au dernier centime de la dette publique qui explose. C'est pourquoi je lance un appel pour tous les travailleurs, ouvriers, employés ou sans emploi, retraités. Il est grand temps de reconnaître à chacun le statut de producteur de richesse et les droits qui lui sont associés. Droit au salaire, droit à la santé et droit à l'enseignement. Ainsi nous affirmerons notre dignité et pour y parvenir, nous orienter vers un nouveau programme politique, celui du socialisme, tout simplement. Vive le 1er mai et vive la fête internationale des travailleurs. Ναι, είμαι από την Ελλάδα, ε, με λένε Ελένη Πιεροπούλου, είμαι μέλος της Λαϊκής Ενότητας. Ε, η Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση εδώ και 10 χρόνια έχει επιβάλει στην Ελλάδα σκληρά μνημόνια, με αποτέλεσμα να έχει χαθεί ε, μέρος της δημόσιας περιουσίας, λιμάνια, αεροδρόμια, ε, τηλεπικοινωνίες. Ε, έχουν, φύγει, έχουν γίνει μετανάστες ε, ένα πολύ μεγάλο ποσο, ε, ποσοστό ε, της νεολαίας και ειδικαίτερα επιστήμονες. Έχουν μειωθεί οι συντάξεις 40% με, με αποτέλεσμα η πιο πολύ η μεγάλη πλειοψηφία των συνταξιούχων να παίρνει ένα χαρτζηλίκι. Ε, η κυβέρνη, λόγω της πανδημίας έχει φανεί το, η αδυναμία που επικρατεί στο δημόσιο σύστημα υγείας χωρίς πολλούς γιατρούς, χωρίς νοσηλευτικό προσωπικό, χωρίς μεθ. Ε, Απ' τη μία λέει η κυβέρνηση να μείνουμε στο σπίτι και η υποκρισία της είναι ότι 30 του μηνός, 30 Απριλίου, ε, πάβει να υπάρχει προστασία της πρώτης κατοικίας με αποτέλεσμα πάρα πολλοί κόσμος να χάσει τα σπίτια τους και να μείνουν στον δρόμο. Ε, η κυβέρνηση από, τη, από την άλλη κάνει δωράκια στους επιχειρηματίες, σε αυτούς που έχουν τα μέσα μαζικής ενημέρωσης και από την άλλη κάνει φοβερή επίθεση σε εργασιακά δικαιώματα όσα αυτά έχουν απομείνει. Ε, οι πρόσφυγες και οι μετανάστες ζουν σε απαράδεκτες δομές φιλοξενίας, συνοστισμένοι, χωρίς τα απαραίτητα ήδη υγιεινής για, την, για, την ατομική τους, για τις ατομικές τους ανάγκες. Ε, η ζωή τους κινδυνεύει και, και βρίσκεται σε κίνδυνο κάθε μέρα. Ε, όπως πάνε τα πράγματα, φαίνεται άλλη μια φορά ότι η κυβέρνηση επιχειρεί την κρίση αυτή πάλι να την, να, να, να την πληρώσουν τα λαϊκά στρώματα και να μην ακουμπήσει καθόλου το κεφάλαιο. Αυτό βέβαια είναι στο χέρι του λαού να το αποτρέψει. Καλούς αγώνες, πανευρωπαϊκούς, για μια καλύτερη ζωή για όλους. Mexico, Pakistan, Senegal, Portugal, and Belarus. Buenas, hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Gladys Vanessa Lira Costa. Soy de la ciudad de Tecate, Baja California, y soy una activista en defensa de los derechos laborales de los trabajadores. Eh, fui una empleada de la empresa Rodwell, también de aquí mismo, de Tecate, Baja California, presté mis servicios por 15 años, pero fui víctima 
de los abusos de esta empresa, pues fui despedida por luchar por los derechos de nosotros, los trabajadores, dentro de ella. Sin embargo, en estos, en estos tiempos del COVID, las empresas han abusado, ya que se dicen ser que son esenciales, lo cual no lo son. Eh, a través de el, el, los paros laborales que se hicieron aquí en, en, en Tecate, se ha logrado que algunas empresas acaten el decreto que se, que se hizo para que las empresas no esenciales paren de trabajar porque están poniendo en riesgo la salud del obrero. El obrero tiene miedo de, de llegar a su casa contagiado, sin embargo, eh, ellos están levantando la mano, nos han estado contactando para que los apoyemos, para que se, les haga, para que se haga valer este, este decreto que fue hecho el 31 de marzo. Sin embargo, hasta el día de hoy, eh, 21 de abril, hay empresas que siguen trabajando, vuelvo a repetir la salud del obrero no tiene precio Saludo amigos servidor Alfonso Cortés siempre del lado de la clase trabajadora, hemos sido pisoteados hemos sido víctimas en esta franja fronteriza, en Tecate Baja California, México en particular, se ha incumplido el decreto presidencial para cuidar la salud de los trabajadores. Basta de eso. Este primero de mayo estamos anunciando a través del Comité Obrero Internacional para que sigamos todos en la lucha por la clase trabajadora. Fueron más de 70 empresas que Tecate estuvieron abusando de los trabajadores. Un servidor junto con el colectivo Tecate en pie de lucha, la OPT de Baja California y en la lucha hombro con hombro del resto de los trabajadores Pudimos cerrar, pudimos denunciar para reivindicar a la clase trabajadora con los derechos que corresponde y merece. Por último, en este mismo sentido, estamos impulsando la conferencia binacional contra el TEP-B por los derechos laborales. Vamos a tenerla en ambos lados de la frontera para este septiembre de 2020. Tecate va a ser la sede. Los esperamos. Solidarity greetings, comrades from all Pakistan Trade Union Federation. I salute to all international comrades struggling and fighting to get and secure the rights of the working class. Comrades, friends, as we are all aware that COVID-19 is a pandemic virus which is spread and hits mostly the working class all over the world. The whole world have seen how badly USA, the imperialist capitalist country, handled the situation where more than 40,000 people died and nearly a million were hit by the coronavirus. Why the puppet governments are unable to handle it? Because the entire worker policies of the privatization of the public health system create more deaths. What is the situation in Pakistan, in my country, where the 69% percent people live, living under the poverty line The minimum wage is rupees 17,500 per month if I convert it in US dollar, which is 109. And the daily earning is 3.62 US dollar. Many people have no drinking water. The capitalist puppet governments are not paying attention to the working class issues, denying the workers basic rights, denying secure jobs, privatization of state-owned company, results in no implementation of labor laws, no social security for everybody, and no living wage. There is no labor inspection, restriction on trade union freedom, no statistics on workers working as daily wages, temporary or co contract base available. Women have no equal rights according to ILO Convention 100, which is not implement, which says equal remuneration for equal work. There is no legislation for agriculture workers. Multina multinational companies are snubbing the rights of the working class. No land reforms. And the capitalist imperialist government policies are pushing us on the walls. Friends, All Pakistan Trade Union Federation is a national level trade union federation which mobilizing the working class 
forming trade unions in different industrial units, holding assemblies, rallies, protest meetings in all over the country to defend the rights of the lives of their jobs of the working class. To stop capitalist and imperialist entire worker policies, we, the international working class, are holding a rally on May 1st, International Labor Day. As a trade unionist and activist, we, the workers, the peasants, the teachers, the doctors, the journalists, loud our voice together with our international working class comrades that Corona stick the, struck the countries in whole world but will not stop the struggle of the workers international for the acceptance of their demands. Long live working class, long live international solidarity. Kamar, my salutations are the most fraternal of you all. My name is Suleiman Zoudialo, from Senegal. The Senegal is a country of Africa and has 15 million inhabitants. Here in Senegal, the crisis economic precedes the crisis sanitaire. Why? Because, very simply, since the last 60 years of so-called independence, our own politics, our own government, has not been able to make a good choice economic. Because, very simply, they have preferred favoriser les multinationales impérialistes au détriment des nationaux, au détriment, n'est-ce pas, du patronat sénégalais. C'est pourquoi, avec l'avènement, avec l'apparition du coronavirus, communément appelé COVID-19, aujourd'hui, le Sénégal est dans des situations extrêmement difficiles, tant sur le plan économique, tant sur le plan social, que sur le plan politique. Même si le gouvernement a annoncé certaines mesures, allant dans le sens de prendre en tout cas des solutions concrètes pour endiguer cette pandémie. Des décisions allant de l'aide alimentaire jusqu'au pour obligation du masque, sans oublier le couvre-feu, l'état d'urgence qui a été annoncé par le gouvernement. Sur le plan économique, il faut préciser qu'aujourd'hui, en fait, beaucoup d'emplois sont menacés. Parce qu'il faut le préciser qu'au Sénégal, 41% du PIB est en tout cas soutenu par l'économie informelle. Et cette économie informelle représente 48% de la création d'emplois au niveau du Sénégal. Dans le secteur touristique, aujourd'hui, beaucoup d'emplois sont menacés. C'est plus de 30 000 emplois qui sont menacés, même si euh, l'État a annoncé des, des, des mesures pour pouvoir venir en appui à, à ces travailleurs-là. Sur le plan social, c'est une situation vraiment chaotique, très difficile. Parce que tout simplement, euh, les populations sont dans une extrême pauvreté, notamment les populations qui sont au nord du pays, dans le Fouta, qui aujourd'hui vivent dans une situation de disette. Que dire des enseignants catholiques qui sont dans le privé, qui en tout cas risquent d'aller au chômage technique Que dire des travailleurs de cette entreprise chinoise installée dans la commune de Sindia, commune située dans le département de Bourg qui aujourd'hui ne sont pas en tout cas dans toutes les conditions, n'est-ce pas, réglementaires pour pouvoir tout simplement être dans des dispositions à pouvoir gérer cette crise-là. Qu'en est-il de ces communes, de ces villes, de ces villages qui n'ont pas accès à l'électricité, qui n'ont pas accès à l'eau Parce qu'il faut le dire qu'au Sénégal, beaucoup de villes, beaucoup de villages n'ont pas accès à l'eau, n'ont pas accès à l'électricité. C'est pourquoi d'ailleurs dans la commune d'Anguero, des organisations de la société civile, des citoyens s'étaient mobilisés bien avant cette pandémie pour réclamer en tout cas une gestion démocratique, une gestion, n'est-ce pas, transparente de l'eau, parce que tout simplement dans cette commune, de plus de 40 000 habitants situés à 69 km de la capitale, ces populations n'ont pas accès à l'eau. Camarades, cette crise sanitaire ne fait que montrer les failles du capitalisme, ne fait que montrer les failles des choix politiques de nos gouvernements, tant sur le plan économique, tant sur le plan social. Camarades, il est temps que le capitalisme cède sa place, que le socialisme, enfin, règne en maître. Vive le socialisme. Merci, camarades. Vive, camarades. Mon nom est Mario Tomé, sou oficial do exército português, coronel de cavalaria na reforma, e integrei o movimento dos capitães que derrubou o fascismo para acabar com a guerra colonial, que aliás já estava a ser vencida pelos movimentos de libertação. Quero saudar-vos neste dia 1 de maio, saudar a luta dos trabalhadores, a luta internacionalista dos trabalhadores, 
rumo ao socialismo que terá que passar, obviamente, pela liquidação do sistema capitalista. A pandemia que hoje vivemos e foi aproveitada pelos governos para instilar o medo nas pessoas e a ideia de que somos todos iguais e temos que estar todos unidos, vai ter uma influência grave na resposta à crise económica e social que aí vem. Nós, os revolucionários, temos que dar a resposta adequada e a resposta adequada tem que passar pela evidenciação por mostrar como é o sistema capitalista que liquida a natureza. É o sistema capitalista que provoca as alterações climáticas. E esta pode ser uma abordagem que, que une a luta que tem que ser travada contra a crise económica e social à luta pela, contra as alterações climáticas. Considero que nós temos que pensar que se não, não criarmos condições de transformação revolucionária no nosso no, no mundo, uh, e agora há condições para que isso possa ser abordado com mais, com mais esperança e com mais entusiasmo, uh, nós poderemos vir com o desenvolvimento da tecnologia e o internacionalismo científico, nós podemos vir a ficar submetidos a um fascismo tecnológico global. Eu acho que a alternativa a esta ameaça é só uma. É a revolução dos povos, a revolução proletária, a caminho do socialismo. Um grande abraço a todos e a luta continua. Obrigado. Дорогие товарищи, революционный привет вам из Беларуси. Пару слов о ситуации в нашей стране. Сегодня рабочий класс Беларуси, как и большинство стран мира, находится в непростом положении. Неолиберальные реформы ухудшили его положение в несколько раз за последние десятилетия. Повышение цен, платная медицина, платное здравоохранение, сокращение всех социальных льгот – и пособий делают жизнь людей все тяжелее и тяжелее. На фоне коронавируса и глобального экономического кризиса эта ситуация в последние недели только усугубляется. К сожалению, борьба рабочих Беларуси за свои права сегодня носит чаще стихийный и разрозненный характер. Но мы верим в то, что сознательные рабочие Вместе с активистами, активистами международного революционного движения смогут в ближайшее же время поднять эту борьбу на новый уровень, уровень классовой сознательности и самоорганизации. Поэтому накануне Великого дня, Международного дня солидарности трудящихся, я хочу всем нам пожелать успехов в этой борьбе за права людей и труда и э, максимальной солидарности, которая является главным оружием всех трудящихся в борьбе за лучшее будущее, за социализм. Good day, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, fraternal greetings from the Canadian state. I am Ross Ashley, one of the correspondents here of the International Workers Committee, and grateful for this opportunity to address this worldwide May Day meeting. This Canadian state was established back in 1867 as the North American junior partner of British imperialism. Over the last century and a half, it has graduated to being a junior partner of American imperialism, having some public reservations about, for example, the embargo of Cuba, but ready to second American foreign policy in Venezuela. A lot of financial assistance from the federal and provincial governments is being directed to the big capitalist companies and corporations in order to keep the capitalist economy running. For example, 
The gigantic Amazon Corporation has been hired by the federal government to deliver protective equipment and treatment devices to hospitals across the country rather than using Canada Post. On the other hand, a massive bailout of the big oil companies has been shelved, at least temporarily, in favor of a scheme to help pay for cleaning up old oil wells. This is due to a massive public pressure campaign. As for the condition of the working class as a whole here, precarious work is more dangerous than ever. Food delivery services to those who can shelter at home, for example, are getting nearly as dangerous as caring for elders and disabled persons in long-term care homes. The hardest hit segment of the population all across the country has been those elderly and infirm residents of the long-term care homes, especially homes for the aged. Nearly half of the COVID-19 deaths in Ontario have been in nursing homes. The vast majority of personal support workers in those homes are hired part-time by the private operators and must work in two or three such places to make enough to live. That has contributed to spreading the virus from one hot spot to another. This is exacerbated by a lack of any stockpiles of personal protective equipment from simple medical surgical face masks to N95 particulate masks to sufficient disposable gloves to keep from using them on patient after patient. The provincial government here absolutely refuses to take over even the worst of those nursing homes, although they have finally mandated that the workers can only work in one home each and suggested that their pay ought to be boosted to full-time levels. And of course, those workers themselves have started to sicken and die. In Quebec, a rumor was floated that the Coalition Action Quebec government was going to start to reopen the schools in May. The teachers' unions have organized a petition drive online and got over 175,000 signatures in two days against this plan. It has now been shelved by Premier Legault. There have been many spontaneous walkouts, wildcat strikes, among unionized workers in the public and parapublic sectors, particularly demanding good protective equipment, for example, for bus and streetcar drivers, hospital and nursing home cleaners, etc. The Labour-based New Democratic Party has a spotty record of both collaboration with the bosses' parties and some opposition to some of the worst practices of the provincial and federal governments. Overall, however, the party champions the virtues of collaboration with the big cores, corporations against the enemy, COVID-19. Workers, youth, and mankind must be saved. Not the banks, not the capitalists, not their profits. Our struggle continues. La crisis que enfrentamos es producto del capitalismo salvaje al que nos vemos sometidos. Sea una pandemia producida por la invasión de espacios naturales en afán de lucro o por una guerra bacteriológica por la dominación del mundo. Es el modelo económico capitalista el causante de encontrarnos confinados en nuestros hogares. A su vez, esta crisis sanitaria nos muestra el verdadero rostro del capitalismo. Sistemas de salud precario, condiciones mínimas de seguridad e higiene para los trabajadores, actitud represiva de los gobiernos, principal interés en la economía y las ganancias antes que en la vida de las personas. Y surgen nuevos problemas, sistemas educativos descuidados, incapacidad de atender a los sectores más pobres, hacinamiento en las principales urbes, etc. Dando clara muestra que este sistema no sirve y urge construir una alternativa socialista. La crisis está presente y la solución que se pretende es que este mismo modelo que nos lleva al colapso se salve con el dinero de los contribuyentes, de la clase trabajadora. En lugar de reforzar los servicios públicos, se prioriza salvar la economía entregando millonarias sumas de dinero a la banca y al sector privado. No lo vamos a permitir. Es hora de echar a lado nuestras diferencias y conformar la unidad en un solo bloque. La clase trabajadora no tiene por qué pagar la crisis, que la paguen los ricos. A quien hay que salvar es a los trabajadores, los jóvenes y la humanidad, no a los bancos ni a los capitalistas. Trabajadores del mundo, unidos. Bonsoir, chers camaradas. Je m'interviens au nom du groupe marocain qui édite le bulletin de tribune des travailleurs, qui se reconnaît dans les combats du comité international contre la guerre et l'exploitation. Au Maroc, c'est la politique de la privatisation des systèmes de la santé de la détérioration des hôpitaux, de démantèlement des droits aux soins et de la protection sociale, qui tue et menace de tuer des milliers de milliers de personnes. 
des gouvernements successifs dans ce pays, qu'ils soient de droite ou de la gauche, n'ont fait depuis l'indépendance qu'appliquer les dictats des institutions internationales, des fonds monétaires, de la Banque mondiale, des dictats qui ruinent nos ressources économiques et désertent les services publics nationaux, de la santé, de l'éducation, etc. Le gouvernement marocain a imposé un confinement sur l'ensemble du territoire national, alors que des centaines de milliers d'hommes et de femmes n'ont même pas de quoi se nourrir. Des dizaines de milliers de familles remplies de protection sociale et d'assurance maladie et se sont trouvées entre le marteau de la pandémie et l'enclume de la famille. Au lieu de protéger la population, le gouvernement ne cesse d'injecter des milliards et des milliards pour l'économie, c'est-à-dire pour les capitalistes et les banques, selon les décisions du 17 mars dernier, y compris la décision de déplafonner l'endettement des institutions internationales, les dettes communes de nos enfants à leur pays demandent au détriment de nos besoins vitaux, au détriment de nos services publics nationaux. Des centaines de milliers de travailleurs sont contraints d'aller au travail dans des usines sans protection. La Casablanca, comme les travailleurs d'une entreprise spécialisée de la, produ de la production de pièces sanitaires, ont protesté contre l'absence des moyens de protection, le patron les a menacés de les licencier. Quelques jours après, on a découvert que plus de 170 ouvriers sont atteints par le virus et quoi dire de leur famille et de leurs proches. La même chose se répète dans des milliers d'entreprises que les employeurs et le gouvernement à leur service et pour garantir leur profit, on lissé des ouvriers sans protection aucune, comme est le cas dans des usines de poissons à l'arrache, à Tanger, des usines textiles à face et tisards. Le gouvernement, et avec l'appui de quelques directions syndicales, a décidé une déduction de trois jours de salaire mensuel des fonctionnaires, en même temps qu'elle distribue des cadeaux et des milliards aux banques et aux capitalistes. Le moment où vous voyez, les organisations politiques qui partent des intérêts des travailleurs, les organisations syndicales nationales ont la responsabilité, au contraire, de combattre contre toute forme du monde sacré, et les de leur responsabilité historique de combattre pour l'annulation de la dette extérieure, pour la nationalisation, la nationalisation de toutes les communes nationales, combattre pour que les ressources naturelles et économiques de la nation soient dirigées pour sauver et protéger le peuple travailleur, pas pour les banques, pas pour les capitalistes. Les gouvernements successifs ne recrutaient plus dans les hôpitaux, à cause des milliers de médecins et d'infirmiers qui observaient depuis des années des grèves au de l'amélioration des conditions de travail, le gouvernement n'a répondu que par la répression. Les budgets de santé sont année après année détériorés par les passes, par la dette qui, extérieure qui étrangle la nation et les services publics. Les dispensaires fermés année après année. Très bien, travailleur, adresse et condoléances aux familles des morts, son salut fraternel aux agents de la santé qui sont au fond du combat contre la pandémie, adresse son salut aux enseignants qui poursuivent leur œuvre d'enseignement à distance par leurs propres moyens et dans des conditions difficiles, aux mères de famille obligées de faire un énorme effort pour l'enseignement à distance de leur enfant, très bien, les travailleurs, revendique avec l'ensemble des membres ouvriers marocains, nationalisation tout de suite des banques, des entreprises industrielles, renationaliser tous les services publics, toutes les entreprises qui étaient privatisées, arrêt total du paiement de dette extérieure, que le gouvernement interdit tout licenciement des travailleurs et qu'il impose aux entrepreneurs de verser les salaires de leurs employés. Il vient en aide aux parents d'élèves pour l'octroi par l'octroi des ordinateurs, des téléphones, de wifi pour suivre le décor à distance, l'argent pour les hôpitaux, pour la recherche scientifique et les services publics, pas pour les banques et les capitalistes. Libération immédiate de tous les empoisonnements politiques, à commencer par les militants de Hayrak de Rif, pour l'Assemblée constituante souveraine, sur la sélection qui peut mettre une politique qui sauve la population, abat la barbarie capitaliste, vive l'international ouvrière, vive la solidarité ouvrière internationale. Merci, camarades. Hallo, mein Name ist Andreas Gangel. Ich arbeite bei Amazon Bad Hersfeld als Versandmitarbeiter. Ich bin Verdi Vertrauensmann, Mitglied der Streikleitung und Nachrücker im Betriebsrat. Wir befinden uns seit über sieben Jahren im Arbeitskampf um einen Tarifvertrag. Amazon verweigert sich bis heute, mit uns Gespräche zu führen. Einen internationalen Arbeitskampf kann nur mit einer in weltweiten Organisierung der Amazon-Arbeiter erfolgen, mit weltweiten Aktionen in jedem Land. Man muss verhindern, dass Amazon möglich ist, seine Arbeiter in den einzelnen Ländern gegeneinander auszuspielen, indem es Aufträge jederzeit dorthin verlagert, wo keine Aktionen stattfindet. Daher haben wir uns sehr schnell damit begonnen, uns international zu vernetzen. Wir begannen 2015 uns mit polnischen Kollegen zu treffen, dann kamen die Franzosen hinzu. Daraus entstand ein internationales Treffen aus mehreren Ländern, was alle halbe Jahre stattfindet, zuletzt in Madrid.
Dabei haben wir gemerkt, dass die Probleme überall die gleichen sind und wir ent entwickelten den Slogan Same Struggle, Same Fight, Workers of the World, Unite. Diese Solidarität ist wichtig im Kampf gegen einen internationalen Riesen wie Amazon. Denn inzwischen geht Amazon auch vor gegen die Organisatoren der Arbeitskämpfe. Sind wir in Deutschland noch recht geschützt durch Gesetze, sind in den USA gerade drei Kollegen gefeuert worden. Christian Smalls in New York, Maren Koster und Emily Cunningham in Seattle. Ihnen gilt meine Solidarität. Lasst uns gemeinsam für die Rücknahme der Kündigungen kämpfen. Diese Solidarität gilt es aber auch zu zeigen gegenüber Arbeitern anderer Unternehmen und in anderen Ländern. Gerade der 1. Mai ist ein symbolisches Datum der Solidarität und für den Kampf um den 8-Stunden-Tag, den uns Regierungen und Konzerne nun nehmen wollen. Das können wir nicht zulassen. Hier müssen wir uns vor allem zur Wehr setzen. Leider können wir uns aufgrund der Corona-Pandemie nicht direkt treffen. Auf diesen Austausch hatte ich mich sehr gefreut. Hatte ich doch im Vorfeld gerade meine britischen Kollegen zu einer Vernetzung aufgerufen. Doch diese Pandemie ist hoffentlich bald vorbei und wir können dieses Treffen nachholen. Bis dahin wünsche ich euch alles Gute und lasst uns solidarisch zusammenstehen, weltweit im Kampf um unsere Rechte als Arbeiter. Haksızlığa, hukuksuzluğa, ayrımcılığa, eşitsizliğe, taşeron çalışmaya ve zalimin zulmüne karşı yıllarca süren bir mücadele yürütüyoruz. Bizler bu mücadele yüzünden çalışma hayatımıza, işimize son veriliyor. Baskılara ve fetlere maruz kalıyoruz. Hak mücadelesi verdiğimiz için hakkımızda keyfi soruşturmalar ve davalar açılıyor. Davalar yıllarca sürüyor. Davalar kazansak bile işe iademiz gerçekleşmiyor. Bizler mücadelemizi artık sadece ekonomik alanla sınırlı tutamayacağımızın bilincine vardığımızdan beri ülkemizde büyük bir işçi partisi inşa etme faaliyeti sürdürüyoruz. Farklı iş kollarında mücadele eden işçiler olarak işçinin kendi partisini bu yüzden kurduk. Kendilerini sağ ya da sol partilere yakın hisseden bütün işçilere sesleniyoruz. Tüm mücadeleci işçileri ve tabi bütün işçi akımlarını ve işçi sendikalarının kapitalizme gerçekten karşı olan ve mevcut hükümetlerle onların partilerine bağımsız böyle bir partide sağ tutmaya çağırıyoruz. İşçi sınıfları büyük patronların çıkarlarını gözeten hükümetlerle işbirliği yaparak milli birlik hükümetleri kuramazlar. Yaşadığımız salgın karşısında zenginlerle yoksullar aynı gemide değiller. Kendimizi aynı gemide sanırsak celladımızın eline idam yükümüzü vermiş oluruz. Bizi kurtaracak olan kendi sınıfımızın bütün ezilenlerle birlikte kuracağı ittifaktır. Yaşasın işçi sınıfının dünyanın bütün ezilenleriyle kuracağı ittifak. Büyük insan medeniyetini kurtaracak olan sadece budur. Patron hükümetlerinin politikalarına son vermek için işini kendi partisi olarak sınıf mücadelesi veriyoruz. Koronavirüs pandemisinin bize gösterdiği gerçek kapitalist düzenin iflas etmiş olduğudur. Hatta bu onun en çürümüş biçimi olan emperyalizmin iflasıdır. Ama bu iflas eden emperyalizmin yerine biz de insanlığı kurtaracak bir başka yönetimi harekete geçirmeliyiz. Bu başka yönetimin yolu da ancak dünyanın bütün ülkelerinde işçi sınıfı iktidarlarını kurmaktan geçiyor. Yani büyük üretim araçları üzerindeki özel mülkiyete son verecek işçi sınıfı iktidarları. Bu olmadığı takdirde kapitalizmin yıkımından ancak emek sömürüsü ve daha doğrusu vahşi çıkar. Bu yıkımı, bu vahşiyeti engellemenin tek yolu her ülkede kitlesel büyük bağımsız işçi partileri oluşturmak ve bu partilerin bir araya gelmesiyle de işçilerin dünya partisini inşa etmektir. Nasıl koronavirüsle mücadele, dünya çapında bir mücadele ise kapitalizme karşı işçi sınıfının iktidar mücadelesi ve evrenseldir. Ve bir dünya partisi gereklidir. Kapitalistlerin dünya partisi ve G7'leri, G8'leri varsa bizim de dünya partimiz olmak zorunda. Sermaye sahipleri kendi çıkarları için her koşullar birleşebiliyorlar. 
Bizler de her koşulda birleşmemiz gerekiyor. 1 Mayıs vesilesiyle yaptığımız bu toplantıda 3 sene önce Hindistan'da Mumbai'de yaptığımız toplantının devamıdır. Ve bu toplantıda daha hızlı adımlar atmamıza imkan sağlamalıdır. Çünkü vahşet felaketli kapımıza dayanmış durumda. Hepinizi işçi sınıfının sömürüye, savaşlara ve kuralsız çalışmaya karşı mücadelesinde bir araya olmaya çağırıyoruz. Yaşasın 1 Mayıs. Bu düzeni ve sistemi hep birlikte değiştireceğiz. İşçi sınıfın iktidarını kuracağız. Yaşasın işçi sınıfının Dünya Partisi için mücadeleye. The next five speakers are from Ecuador, Palestine, Zimbabwe, Togo, and France. Reciban un fraterno saludo de parte del camarada Pepe, ex responsable sindical del sector eléctrico ecuatoriano. Y dirijo a todos los militantes del Comité Obrero Internacional que participan en el mitin del 1 de mayo 2020 contra la guerra y la explotación y por la Internacional Obrera. Bajo la consigna, ¿a quién hay que salvar? A los trabajadores, los jóvenes y a la humanidad, no a los bancos y a los capitalistas. Con mucha indignación debo pasar denunciando que el Ecuador se hunde cada vez más manejado por un grupo de políticos incapaces y codiciosos liderados por Lenin Moreno quienes para imponer su plan de gobierno han pactado con la burguesía nacional e internacional, han controlado la mayoría de las organizaciones sindicales del sector público. Es así que el propio gobierno ha nombrado a pseudo dirigentes, violando la libertad y autonomía sindical, dirigentes que han sido cooptados a cambio de la entrega de prebendas personales. Es así como el gobierno de Moreno ha desmovilizado y amordazado al movimiento sindical, desbrozando el camino para la imposición de las políticas dictadas por el FMI y el Banco Mundial, despidos masivos de trabajadores, desmantelamiento de los servicios públicos, todo esto para precautelar sus afanes privatizadores, es decir, defender sus intereses personales y de grupo. Es por ello que en el mes de octubre de 2019 se produjo un levantamiento iniciado por el movimiento indígena, mismo que fue apoyado por la gran mayoría del pueblo ecuatoriano. El levantamiento se produjo contra las drásticas medidas económicas tomadas por el gobierno. De su parte, y como no podía ser de otra manera, las cámaras empresariales, los grandes medios de comunicación, los militares y policías juntos con el gobierno, se presentaron como un sólido bloque de poder. Así atacaron a los movilizados con una violencia inusitada, solo vista en regímenes dictatoriales, dejando una secuela de muertos, heridos, desaparecidos, encarcelados, todos del lado del pueblo. Pero ni todo el poder del Estado ni la salvaje represión hicieron retroceder el descontento de un pueblo que se cansó. La subida de los precios de los combustibles y con ello la subida de los pasajes y los alimentos, sumado a la falta de trabajo y empleo, hicieron que la gente se tomara las calles y plazas del país. El gobierno no tuvo otra salida que aceptar la derogatoria del decreto causante de la crisis. Así el pueblo reivindicó en la práctica que la lucha y la unidad de clase son las únicas armas que podemos blandir contra un Estado y un gobierno opresor, contra la clase empresarial que no entiende nada de justicia ni de democracia y que su único objetivo es llenarse sus bolsillos a costa de la opresión y el sufrimiento de las grandes mayorías. Es en estas condiciones donde el servicio público de salud ha sido desmantelado a causa de los masivos despidos y la falta de entrega de recursos que aparece la pandemia causada por el virus COVID-19, misma que por la ineptitud y falta de previsión de las autoridades de turno, al momento ha hecho colapsar los servicios de salud. Es así que se calcula que solo en la ciudad de Guayaquil el virus ha matado a más de 10.000 personas. Aprovechándose del confinamiento obligatorio y la desmovilización del movimiento sindical, 
La única respuesta que el gobierno ha tomado es el anuncio de la imposición de nuevas medidas económicas, es decir, más despidos de personal del servicio público, disminución de sueldos y salarios, eliminación de subsidios de los combustibles, etcétera, etcétera. Es decir, nuevamente se pretende que la crisis sea pagada por los trabajadores y el pueblo. أتوجه للطبقة العاملة في العالم أجمع بالتحية وتحديدا للطبقة العاملة الفلسطينية التي تعاني من ظروف استثنائية تحت ظل الاحتلال الإسرائيلي وسياسات الأبرتهايد الإسرائيلية كما تعاني من القمع الدائم والمتواصل من قبل سلطة فلسطينية سلطة تمثل مصالح البرجوازية الرأسمالية المحلية ولا تكترث إطلاقا بمصالح الطبقة العاملة إذا تحية لكل عمال العالم وتحية للطبقة العاملة الفلسطينية في ظل هذه الظروف الصعبة لانتشار الوباء وباء كورونا وهنا لابد أن أتحدث عن وباء كورونا والطبقة العاملة الفلسطينية في 10 مارس أعلنت إسرائيل إقفال كامل لكل المعابر والحدود مع الضفة الغربية واشترطت على العمال وهم عشرات الآلاف قد يبلغون حوالي 100 ألف عامل فلسطيني يعملون على الجانب الآخر من الخط الأخضر اشترطت عليهم البقاء في أماكن عملهم لمدة شهر على الأقل دون أن توفر لهم مكانا للعيش الكريم ودون أن تعمل على تحسين شروط استقبالهم السلطة الفلسطينية قبلت بهذا الاشتراط الإسرائيلي وذلك لتخفيف الضغط الاجتماعي الذي تمثله سياسات الاحتلال كما تمثله السياسات القمعية للسلطة بإضافة إلى الأزمة الاقتصادية الخانقة إذا كان هناك مصلحة فلسطينية رسمية ومصلحة إسرائيلية لاستغلال العمال وإبقائهم في هذه الأماكن ما هو جديد فعلا وما هو يستحق الذكر هنا أن السلطة بدلا السلطة التي رحبت ببقاء العمال في أماكن عملهم في إسرائيل بدأت الآن تتهمهم بنقل العدوى عدوى كورونا إلى مناطق الضفة الغربية وهم لذلك ليس مرحبا بهم من قبل السلطة التي قامت ببعثهم لكي يعملون في القطاع الصناعي والزراعة الإسرائيلي وتحديدا في قطاع البناء العمال الفلسطينيون في الجانب الآخر من الخط الأخضر يعملون في ظل شروط صعبة هم يعانون أيضا من الجو العنصري العام الذي يعمل ضدهم كما يعانون من ممارسات استغلال أكثر فداحة من الأيام العادية من قبل أرباب العمل إذ أن أرباب العمل الإسرائيليين يحاولون احتجاز رواتبهم لا يدفعون لهم كل نفقات إقامتهم في هذه الأماكن هم ينامون ينامون في العراء ولا يتمكنون من استئجار مكان لائق للعيش الكريم وبعضهم ومعظمهم ينام في أماكن الورشات مباشرة العامل الفلسطيني بهذا يعاني من قمع مزدوج من قمع طبقي من قبل سلطة تمثل مصالح البرجوازية القمبرة دوري الفلسطيني كما يعاني من جانب آخر من سياسات الاحتلال ومن سياسات وممارسات الأبرت هايد الإسرائيلي ضده أعتقد أتمنى أن أكون قد أبلغت رسالتي بخصوص الظروف الخصوصية للطبقة العاملة الفلسطينية في هذه الكلمة القصيرة وشكرا This is Comrade Mafa from Zimbabwe We are in solidarity with the Workers International on this historic occasion. It's a fact that capitalism is in deep crisis. The capitalistic ruling class is clueless on how to solve this crisis. Millions of people are dying like flies all over the world. Zimbabwean situation is worse off because of the economic sanctions imposed on Zimbabwe by Western imperialism. IMF austerity measures on the country are also affecting the health care delivery system. US and Britain have been sending donations to Zimbabwe to fight the pandemic. 
but the donations are an insult to the people of Zimbabwe because these are the people who imposed the economic sanctions on our country, which have virtually destroyed the health delivery system for the past 20 years. The, must, the sanctions must go today. The must sanctions must go now. Our governments do not have enough equipment and money to deal with the virus. The only effective way of dealing with the virus now is lockdowns and social distancing. And this is practically impossible considering that the majority of the working class, they live in overcrowded townships with poor or no sanitation. 90% of the people in Zimbabwe are without jobs because of the economic sanctions. Many live from hand to mouth. They are forced to go out to make an income. The choice is either death by hunger or death by virus. Millions are going to die because of poverty. The crisis has proved that there is no future without socialism. No socialism without a revolution. No revolution without a workers in the national party. We demand the immediate removal of sanctions on Zimbabwe, Cuba, Iran, Venezuela, and North Korea to allow these countries to fight the virus. Africa is not a laboratory for testing vaccines. We demand immediate cancellation of all government debt in Africa. We demand expropriation of all banks, land, and abolition of the stock markets. We demand free water, electricity, health care, and education for all. Bonjour ou bonsoir à tous ceux qui participent à ce meeting international du 1er mai. Pourquoi assistons à une, à une hécatombe en Europe et aux États-Unis Cette situation est une conséquence de la politique qui a été menée, politique de réduction du nombre de per, du personnel soignant, des personnels soignants, Réduction de lits d'hôpitaux, réduction d'équipements. Cette politique est une réplique de ce qui se fait, se faisait depuis des décennies en Afrique de l'Ouest, sur la base d'une décision prise à une réunion tenue à Bamako dans les années 1980 euh, et qui est connue sous le nom de Initiative de Bamako, politique qui avait pour, euh, qui avait pris une décision que désormais toutes les dépenses de santé, la politique de santé et d'éducation doit être laissée à la charge des communautés. C'est-à-dire que les États, pour dégager les fonds, pour pouvoir rembourser euh, la dette, doivent, ne doivent plus investir ni dans la santé ni dans l'éducation. C'est cette politique-là qui a été menée euh, longtemps en Afrique et qui a laissé les hôpitaux et les centres de santé africains dans un état de délabrement total où... Il est rare de trouver un scanner dans les hôpitaux africains. Il est rare de trouver un appareil respiratoire. Donc, on peut conclure que on ne meurt pas en Afrique de l'Ouest du Covid-19, mais on meurt de toutes les autres maladies que l'initiative de Bamako avait privé les populations de moyens de pouvoir les traiter. On meurt de la situation de délabrement de l'économie où la situation normale, c'est le chômage, et la situation exceptionnelle, c'est le fait de trouver un emploi. Donc, on a cette situation où euh, euh, les gens, à cause de la réduction de l'économie, de, de l'activité économique, se retrouvent dans une situation dramatique, puisque 70% des travailleurs dans le pays, euh, dans le, en Afrique de l'Ouest, euh, euh, travaillent, en tout cas, gagnent leur vie dans l'informel, c'est-à-dire avec des petits boulots où on gagne au jour le jour de quoi survivre. C'est ce qui se passe en Afrique. Donc décider euh, le confinement, décider euh, la réduction de l'économie, euh, de l'activité économique, sans tenir compte de cette réalité-là, ben, c'est condamner un ensemble de gens, condamner des familles entières à la famine. Voilà la situation telle qu'elle se présente en Afrique de l'Ouest. Euh, Vive le comité ouvrier international pour l'international ouvrier. Bonsoir. La situation des travailleurs dans les pays capitalistes comme la France ressemble de plus en plus à ce qui a été décrit par les camarades des pays dits pauvres. Le gouvernement Macron saisit l'occasion du coronavirus pour déclencher une offensive sans précédent contre les travailleurs et la jeunesse. 
Un quotidien patronal parle d'un tsunami de licenciements, évoquant des centaines de milliers, voire des millions de suppressions d'emplois dans les semaines et les mois qui viennent. Plus d'un travailleur sur deux dans le privé est au chômage partiel et voit son salaire largement amputé. Le gouvernement multiplie les ordonnances qui remettent en cause les règles collectives. L'une des dernières permet au patron d'individualiser les règles du chômage partiel. De plus en plus, dans les quartiers ouvriers populaires, les familles ont des difficultés à se nourrir du fait de la précarité, de la baisse des revenus, de l'augmentation des prix des produits alimentaires et de la fermeture des cantines scolaires qui fournissaient des repas à prix restreint. En Seine-Saint-Denis, département le plus pauvre de France, les files d'attente de la faim se multiplient. C'est par milliers que les travailleurs, les mères de famille, attendent pendant des heures la distribution de produits alimentaires organisés par les associations et les partis ouvriers. Le préfet déclare même qu'il craint des émeutes de la faim. Et il faut ajouter que les femmes sont particulièrement frappées par cette situation. C'est bien souvent elles qui doivent faire les courses, les devoirs à la maison, les tâches ménagères, en particulier celles qui doivent élever seules leurs enfants. Cette situation ne tombe pas du ciel. Elle est le résultat de décennies de politiques anti-ouvrières menées aussi bien par les gouvernements de droite que de gauche, privatisation, suppression d'emplois dans les services publics et en particulier dans les hôpitaux, déréglementation, démantèlement du code du travail, destruction de l'école publique et des diplômes nationaux. Dans cette situation, une question est posée au mouvement ouvrier. Faut-il, au nom de l'urgence sanitaire, aider le gouvernement à mettre en œuvre toutes ces mesures de destruction ou au contraire combattre cette politique faut-il, comme l'ont fait tous les partis de gauche à l'Assemblée nationale le 19 mars, voter 343 milliards d'euros en faveur des banques et des patrons Ou faut-il exiger la réquisition de ces sommes faramineuses pour répondre aux besoins urgents de la population La presse rapporte que les organisations syndicales sont consultées très régulièrement par le gouvernement, qui souhaite une forme d'association plus durable, du type grande conférence sociale intégrant les syndicats. Et dans le même temps, la brutalité des mesures du gouvernement est telle qu'elle entraîne la contestation légitime de ces mêmes organisations syndicales, par exemple concernant l'individualisation du chômage partiel. Pour mon parti, le Parti ouvrier indépendant démocratique, il ne peut y avoir ni union nationale, ni unité d'action avec Macron et son gouvernement. À cela doit s'opposer l'unité des travailleurs et des organisations pour que soient prises les mesures d'urgence qu'appelle la situation. Les 343 milliards d'euros passés depuis à 410 milliards, doivent être réquisitionnés. Ils ne doivent pas aller aux banques, mais aux travailleurs et à leurs familles pour l'emploi, la santé, l'école. Ils doivent permettre de financer les dettes des travailleurs, leurs loyers, leurs charges diverses. Ils doivent permettre de combattre la faim qui s'installe dans les quartiers populaires. Les entreprises doivent aussi être réquisitionnées pour interdire les licenciements. Ces revendications, sous une forme ou sous une autre, sont celles de la classe ouvrière dans tous les pays. Vive le 1er mai, journée internationale du combat des travailleurs. Je vous remercie. Next uh, speakers are comrades coming from Brazil, India, Burundi, Italy, Switzerland and Australia. Os trabalhadores brasileiros têm muito pouco a comemorar nesse 1 de maio de 2020. Desde o golpe de 2016, que retirou do poder a presidenta democraticamente eleita Dilma Rousseff, uma série de ataques à classe trabalhadora foram colocados em prática pela extrema direita do país, que usurpou o poder e colocou em pauta uma agenda neoliberal e de Estado mínimo. Essa política promoveu e promove o desmonte das conquistas sociais dos trabalhadores brasileiros, que levaram décadas para serem conquistadas. Com a eleição de Bolsonaro em 2018, que contou com o apoio da grande mídia e dos setores mais conservadores da nossa sociedade, os ataques aumentaram ainda mais, com privatizações, terceirizações, cortes de investimentos na área de educação e reformas trabalhistas e previdenciária. O futuro dos trabalhadores e de seus empregos no Brasil é incerto. No outro extremo, o Congresso Nacional aprovou benefícios fiscais ao agronegócio e ajuda financeira aos grandes bancos e contou com o apoio e o voto de partidos à esquerda, que neste momento de pandemia 
deveriam estar mais preocupados em socorrer a classe trabalhadora fragilizada e vulnerável. Neste momento histórico que vivemos no Brasil, é preciso muita reflexão por parte da nossa sociedade. Que o 1 de maio sirva para unir a classe trabalhadora na resistência e na defesa de suas vidas e de seus direitos. Por tudo isso e pelos constantes ataques aos direitos da classe trabalhadora, pelo desmonte dos serviços públicos, entre eles o desmonte da saúde pública, para a qual tanta falta nos faz os bilhões de reais cortados do SUS, mas principalmente pelos ataques à educação pública brasileira, que é o único verdadeiro caminho da emancipação da classe trabalhadora, fica evidente que o governo Jair Bolsonaro não pode continuar. Assim, convocamos a todos os trabalhadores desse país a gritar fora Bolsonaro, para que possamos reconstruir essa nação e reconquistar os direitos que nos foram tomados. Dear comrades, on this May Day, we remember the martyrs of Chicago's Haymarket. We want to salute those who have been holding high the banner of unity, equality and liberty. We want to salute those who have raised their voice against hate, discrimination and injustice. Since 30 years, the ruling classes have been saying that liberalization, privatization and globalization is the only way forward. From education, public health, transport to natural resources, everything was privatized. After recovering from Corona, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that he survived due to British public health system. In fact, he was always against the public sector. America is rich, but the public health system is very poor. So the deaths due to Corona in America are the highest in the world. Whereas Cuba has the best public health service and today the Cuban doctors are in Italy to help Italians. India's Modi government and its media were boasting about India being the new superpower. But Corona and the lockdown have exposed all such hollow claims. The first Corona patient in India was found on January 30th. But our government wasted more than a month in appeasement of visiting US President Donald Trump. The nationwide lockdown was declared on 24th March at 8 o'clock in the evening and the execution started from the midnight same day. Only four hours were given to people to prepare for it. The lockdown was declared without any preparation, without any planning and without consulting any chief minister of the state. This is the typical undemocratic method of governance of Modi. 90% of our labor force is precarious labor. Millions of migrant workers cannot afford individual homes in city. They share hutments. For them, social distancing is impossible. Due to sudden declaration of lockdown, they did not get the payment of the work done up to 24th of March. Within first week of lockdown, they exhausted the money they had. And this triggered the panic among the entire section of migrant workers. And thus, they started walking towards their homes as there was no transport available. We have seen it on TV that they walked hundreds of miles. This is the real story of precarious labor force in India. In the last 30 years, liberalization, privatization, globalization has produced few hundreds of new billionaires worldwide. But the disparity between the rich and the poor has widened like never before. 10% of people possess 90% of wealth. The worldwide rate of unemployment is growing by every passing day. In the greed of profit, the pollution levels have crossed the tolerance limits. Ecological imbalance is adding to the already existing problems. In the post-corona period, the attacks on working class will increase. Many achievements will be rolled back. All the gains achieved by the working class during the freedom struggle and in last 70 years 
are sought to be withdrawn by Modi government and are to be replaced by toothless pro-capital laws in the name of ease of doing business. In fact, it is for the ease of exploitation. There is a possibility of hundreds of thousands jobs being lost. The question of unemployment and hunger will be the new challenge. This is the time for all trade unions and all left and secular forces to unite on common minimum program to protect the rights and ideology of working class. May Day Zindabad. Hello dear friends and comrades, uh, on the occasion uh, of this occurs International Day of Struggle, I would like to thank the comrades of the International Workers uh, Committee for uh, Workers International who organized uh, this international rally, uh, three hours for the Workers International and uh, to greet all people who are attending this meeting and the workers over the world. My name is Paul Kunzimana. Uh, I am the honorary president of the Workers and Democracy Party of Burundi, a country located in East Africa. Dear friends and comrades, Burundi, as all countries through the world, is hit by the COVID-19. The authorities of the country indicate that the effect the effects of this pandemic are very limited. For example, they reported in the middle of the last month that there were only five cases uh, confirmed, among which one death and four recovered. But the workers and youth are uh, concerned and afraid of the, pre of the possible spread of the pandemic for many reasons. First, our activities continue as usual. Second, uh, not everyone has clean water and their disposal on the, at their disposal. Third, people arriving from abroad suspected of being infected are fleeing because they are unable to pay the costs of hotels where they are quarantined. Finally, the country has only one COVID-19 screening center based at, at the National Public Health Institute, INSP, based at Bujumura. Dear friends and comrades, this situation is the result of more than uh, 30 years of implementation of the Structural Adjustment Program of the World Bank uh, the, uh, the IMF and the European Union that dislocated the country, destroying public services, including uh, the public health through the privatization of the, and the payment of the external debt for the interests of imperialism, uh, which continues to plunder the wealth of the country. Thus, uh, this, by this policy, the population uh, is confronted with diseases such as cholera, malaria, bacillary dysentery, etc., while qualified personnel, drugs, and equipments are lacking and the, inf the infrastructures are in ruins. Dear friends and comrades, in Burundi, as everywhere else, meeting workers' needs requires breaking with the imperialism, its financial institutions, and its multinationals. It is workers, youth, my, mankind that must be saved, not the banks or capitalists. Long live the workers' struggle. Thank you for your attention. Cari compagni, cari lavoratori di tutto il mondo, ad oggi l'Italia ha sei volte il numero di morti della Cina, cioè di un paese con un miliardo e mezzo di abitanti. Com'è possibile? 
Prima di tutto, questo disastro è il risultato di 30 anni di politica di attacco alla sanità pubblica portata avanti in nome delle direttive dell'Unione Europea e del pagamento del debito. Hanno soppresso 70.000 posti letto, chiuso centinaia di ospedali, chiuso i servizi territoriali di prevenzione, eliminato 8.000 posti di medici, migliaia di posti di terapia intensiva. E così, quando l'epidemia è arrivata, è stata un disastro. I medici e gli infermieri non avevano le protezioni. Gli ospedali erano intasati di persone malate che contagiavano quelle sane. I mezzi per curare non c'erano. E i medici hanno dovuto scegliere chi far vivere e chi far morire, perché i posti di terapia intensiva erano finiti. Nello stesso tempo il governo ha lasciato aperte le fabbriche per salvare i profitti dei capitalisti e così il virus si è diffuso ancora di più. E allora è stato il disastro. Il disastro che è stato provocato da questo governo e da tutti i governi che hanno messo al primo posto gli interessi dei capitalisti e dei banchieri. Cari compagni, da dove può arrivare una via d'uscita? La risposta è nei fatti di quello che è successo in Italia. È stata la classe operaia che è scesa in sciopero spontaneamente e ha costretto il governo a chiudere le fabbriche. Ma non è stato semplice, perché i lavoratori hanno dovuto superare l'ostacolo dei dirigenti sindacali che avevano firmato un accordo in nome dell'interesse comune che lasciava aperte le fabbriche e continuava a mandare a morire gli operai. Oggi centinaia di migliaia di persone sono rimaste senza lavoro e intanto si annuncia che 19 milioni di cittadini finiranno in povertà. Prendere in mano la produzione, organizzarla per salvare la popolazione, stanziare i miliardi necessari a garantire la sicurezza, i salari, i diritti. Come in tutto il mondo, anche in Italia, questa è l'unica via d'uscita. Questo, nella storia del movimento dei lavoratori, si chiama socialismo. Con la redazione del, tribu del giornale Tribuna Libera, noi facciamo pienamente parte di questa discussione e di questa lotta concreta che è già iniziata. Oggi più che mai è vero ciò che abbiamo affermato a Mumbai con il nostro manifesto. Il progresso della civiltà umana, la pace e la democrazia dipendono in primo luogo dalla capacità degli sfruttati e degli oppressi di tutto il mondo di preservare l'indipendenza delle loro organizzazioni. E per questo è necessario costruire l'internazionale dei lavoratori. Buon primo maggio a tutti. Camarades, travailleuses et travailleurs de tous les continents, je vous adresse un grand salut fraternel et solidaire depuis la Suisse, plus particulièrement Genève, ville internationale. Camarades, bonjour. Camarades, hallo. Compagni, buongiorno. Et comrades, hello. Mon nom est Marc Simet, je suis un enseignant syndicaliste. Je suis l'ancien président du cartel intersyndical des services publics de Genève. Je, en ma fonction de président du cartel intersyndical, je me suis battu contre la vraie maladie qui ronge nos sociétés. Et je ne parle pas aujourd'hui euh, du Covid-19, même si, bien sûr, euh, cette pandémie est d'actualité. Non, Je veux, bien sûr, parler euh, de l'économie néolibérale, l'économie néolibérale qui euh, attaque les services publics, les travailleuses et les travailleurs, qui euh, vend l'austérité forcée, qui euh, nous décide de coupes budgétaires insupportables, euh, bref, qui maltraite les travailleuses et les travailleurs à travers le monde. Cette, euh, ce, ce néolibéralisme euh, entièrement tourné vers le profit d'une minorité au dépens de la majorité, euh, eh bien, nous le voyons aujourd'hui au travers de notre système de santé 
qui est bien sûr affaibli après des années euh, et des années d'attaque. Nous le voyons aujourd'hui, à Genève, il manque des centaines de postes à l'hôpital universitaire. Euh, nous manquons de masques, nous manquons de gel, comme partout ailleurs, parce que nous n'avons pas été préparés, parce que pour faire des économies, nous n'avons pas fait de provisions. Euh, donc la Suisse qui est pourtant un pays avec les grandes pharma, Novartis, Roche et autres n'a pas réussi à faire mieux que les autres tout ça toujours pour plus de profit et euh, moins de services à la population donc en Suisse le travailleur, les, les travailleuses et les travailleurs qui doivent se rendre au travail pour euh, euh, faire tourner la machine euh, pour que bien sûr ces profits euh, continuent euh, dans la poche de certains, eh bien ils ne sont pas dignement protégés, ils manquent de masques, ils manquent de gel. Euh, Peut-être que les, dans certaines entreprises, les, les distances de sécurité ne sont pas respectées et euh, tout ça évidemment euh, cause beaucoup de problèmes et nous nous nous euh, nous, nous, nous, fait, nous, nous pose beaucoup de soucis à nous aussi, euh, les, les, les syndicats. Euh, de plus, nous, nous voyons toujours que les grandes entreprises, les multinationales, les grands groupes sont bien sûr aidés car on favorise toujours l'économie. Mais malheureusement, les indépendants, en tout cas pour certains, et puis surtout les travailleurs temporaires, les travailleurs précaires, ne sont pas aidés. Ils euh, n'obtiendront euh, au mieux pour l'instant que euh, des prêts euh, des prêts qu'ils devront rembourser. Donc, euh, vous pouvez imaginer la situation euh, des, plus, euh, des plus démunis chez nous en Suisse. Chers camarades, libé camarades, cari compagni, dear comrades, euh, je pense qu'avec tout ça, maintenant, c'est le moment de ne pas faiblir et c'est le moment d'exiger des conditions meilleures pour toutes les forces de travail sur cette planète tout en faisant respecter les normes climatiques indispensables qui nous permettront d'avancer dans ce siècle comme l'homme moderne que le 21e siècle réclame. Bon 1er mai à toutes et à tous. Meilleure salutation de la Suisse. Au revoir. Merci. Desde Australia quiero saludar al meeting internacional del 1 de mayo organizado por el Comité Obrero Internacional. Mi nombre es Mónica Aguilera, miembro de la ATE de Chile, actualmente en solicitud de refugio en Australia como producto de mi anterior responsabilidad como presidente del Sindicato de Trabajadores de la Mayor Cirúrgica de Chile. Si bien es cierto las condiciones de los trabajadores australianos son mejores en comparación a América Latina y a otras partes del mundo, hablamos de un sueldo mínimo de 1.500 dólares australianos al mes, con niveles del costo de vida comparados al de Chile y Francia en lo que a la canasta familiar se refiere. Los impuestos al Estado y a los servicios que pagan los trabajadores es lo que ha permitido mantener en pie el estado de bienestar. Como sucede en los países de América Latina, son los altos subsidios y salvatajes a las empresas, bancos y consorcios multinacionales que el gobierno de Australia está realizando lo que salva el sistema, en desmedro de las capacidades de empleo y de niveles de salario. En otras palabras, gracias al esfuerzo de los trabajadores, el estado de bienestar en Australia no se cae. En cuanto a la recesión que se viene, se estima una baja en el crecimiento desde el 6 al 1%, lo que significará altas tasas de desempleo. Pero los capitalistas son salvados por el gobierno, mientras existe un liviano compromiso al no despido, pero que el empleador puede decidir sin sanciones. La central sindical ACTU no plantea cuestionamientos de fondos, sin embargo, existen sindicatos, especialmente los de la educación y enfermera, que demandan cambios más específicos, como que se pague el 100% de los sueldos y no un 85% como plantea la central sindical. De la fuerza laboral de casi 9 millones de trabajadores en Australia, un 13% está sindicalizado en sindicatos controlados por la burocracia del Partido Laborista que adapta su accionar a las políticas de Estado. Sobre el primero de mayo en Australia, Día de los Trabajadores, la central sindical no se manifiesta. No se conmemora este día. Solo algunos sindicatos 
los más de izquierda al partido laborista lo hacen en algunos lugares. Finalmente, confío que este acto internacional sea el comienzo de una mayor profundización de la organización internacional que se necesita. Solo la lucha y la organización de los trabajadores nos hará libres. Speakers are from comrades from Chile, China, Benin, Ireland, and Russia. And after the last speaker, from Mauritius, Romania, Algeria, and Ivory Coast. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Maritza Bastías, de profesión de enfermera, militante de la Alianza de Trabajadores y Estudiantes de Chile. Me dirijo en este mitin organizado por el Comité Obrero Internacional a todos con el propósito de presentar de forma breve la realidad actual que enfrentan los trabajadores y diversos sectores oprimidos en mi país y al mismo tiempo hacer un llamado a todos los que participan de este acto. Como es sabido, el 18 de octubre de 2019 ha estallado una burbuja mantenida durante 30 años por los diferentes gobiernos de la así llamada izquierda y progresismo chileno. Esta burbuja no era otra cosa que las condiciones de explotación impuestas por la dictadura de Pinochet a sangre y fuego durante 17 años. En resumen, una fuerza laboral sometida a la precariedad y el saqueo de sus salarios por medio de la privatización de la salud, de las pensiones, de la educación, de todos los servicios elementales. Esto ha creado la necesidad de sobrevivir por vía de la deuda, la que ha empujado el 80% de la población a ese sistema de vida y en la que el 50% es deudor moroso. Esa fue la burbuja que estalló el 18 de octubre y ha colocado en crisis todas las instituciones. Frente a esta crisis, todos los partidos tradicionales le han entregado el oxígeno y los medios para salvar un régimen político que se hundía con las movilizaciones de millones. La actual pandemia del coronavirus y sus efectos sobre la población están en relación con esas políticas de privatización, que significa que los recursos públicos estén colapsados. Pero esta situación no termina en eso. El actual gobierno y los partidos de la llamada izquierda han aprovechado la ocasión para aceptar los más siniestros golpes a los trabajadores. Han aprobado en el Congreso el libre despido de acuerdo a las necesidades de la empresa y que obliga a los trabajadores a utilizar el seguro de cesantía, mientras millones son saqueados de las arcas fiscales para entregarlos a los bancos y empresarios. Una ola de sentimientos encontrados recorre las filas del pueblo trabajador y de sus familias, entre el miedo a la pandemia y la desolación. Pero también crece la resistencia en cada rincón del país. Los millones asistimos a la cruda realidad de sobrevivir o morir por la pandemia o la miseria. He resumido la coyuntura que vivimos y para terminar esta presentación quiero dirigirme a todos con este acto eh, con un mensaje claro y de lucha. En cada sector poblacional, en cada empresa, los trabajadores luchan en forma aislada los unos de los otros, sin una centralización nacional de sus fuerzas y reivindicaciones. Este panorama también se vive a escala mundial en cada país por separado. En este contexto, creemos que se impone la necesidad de avances en el terreno de la organización internacional. La internacional no puede ser un discurso, una referencia de cierta forma romántica. Es imperativo para salvar a la humanidad de la barbarie que realicemos un paso práctico en esa vía. El sistema capitalista solo se sostiene por el rol mercenario de los antiguos partidos políticos y sindicales de la clase de trabajadora. Pero también por nuestra propia incapacidad de girar para asumir la responsabilidad que nos compete, Hago un llamado a convertir este primero de mayo de 2020 en una reflexión profunda que nos permita reforzar el trabajo para construir la internacional que los trabajadores necesitan con urgencia. La conferencia mundial convocada para este año debe tener el sustantivo a escala internacional. Quiero recordarles que un paso práctico vale más que 100 programas. La barbarie se nos viene encima. Solo el pueblo salvará al pueblo y para ello debemos atrevernos a dar un giro. Muchas gracias. Dear comrade, greetings from Hong Kong. Especially in this time of pandemic crisis, 
when the coronavirus are spreading all over the world. I hope you all stay healthy so that we can fight back. In Hong Kong, we are in a very, very difficult situation. It has been a hot over already uh, a year of our struggle against the extradition bill introduced by the Hong Kong government. But behind it, of course, there's always the Communist Party that want to control Hong Kong, suppress our freedom, and narrow down our political space. But the system in Hong Kong that the Communist Party is supporting is a, a very complete, naked, unfettered capitalism system. And the workers are the ones that suffer under this very undemocratic and at the same time behind it, the foreign regime of China. Over the past year, we have been fighting for democracy and demanding for the right of workers to vote for our government, to control our government and return the government to the people. In this fight, there are lots of sacrifice already. Over 8,000 had already been arrested and over 1,000 people prosecuted, including myself. I have already six charges uh, uh, uh, under uh, uh, of criminal offenses accusing me of organizing and participation in unauthorized assembly. Of course, the assembly is unauthorized. Why should we need our authorization? This is our right. We have the right to march. But of course, the government is using the law against us and against the young people of Hong Kong. As, and many of them had already uh, been, up, uh, apart from uh, being uh, arrested and prosecuted, they are also being um, tortured by the police and, and beaten up by the police on the street and a lot of tear gases, uh, rubber bullets, and this uh, you know, unleashing of police violence against people is uh, very, make us very sad. And uh, of course, everyone is worried about the future of Hong Kong. But it's very obvious, you know, the, the, this Chinese government is trying to narrow down our freedom and want to make Hong, Hong Kong into another China where that the Communist Party regime uh, rule in a very authoritarian manner. But we will fight back. And, and when you look at the system that this Communist Party is supporting, unfettered capitalism, uh, the naked uh, exploitation of the system is very clear in this pandemic crisis. We don't have any un unemployment system. So when workers go on unemployed, no, there are no system at all in Hong Kong to support them. And we are demanding for emergency relief for unemployed workers, but denied it by the government. And the, what, the, what the government only wants to do is to save the business, pump money, billions and billions of dollars uh, of money into the business, but without any guarantee of helping the workers. And so the money will go to a businessman, but the workers will uh, still be unemployed, laid off, uh, on no pay leave, or their wages are being cut uh, in 30%, 40%. And the livelihood of workers, uh, they are, they are, it's a very naked exploitation, and no one in the government care about the workers. And that, that, and it is the role of the Confederation of Trade Unions us to fight back. And we are organizing our workers to fight back, to fight for our rights under this uh, uh, pandemic crisis virus. And uh, we are demanding for unemployment assistance and support for workers who are on uh, no pay leave and underemployment and also uh, reduction of wages. We are demanding for collective bargaining rights so that we can uh, bargain with the employer to get back what we uh, should have uh, and, and, and to protect the workers in Hong Kong. But of course, all this are not possible without a democratic system. And uh, we will fight for democracy. But at the same time, I think very important for the people all over the world to know that even with democracy, is no protection of workers unless we can fight back together and unless uh, training movement can be strong and uh, politically we are uh, conscious of the 
exploitation by this the system, and we are willing to fight back. So we hope that uh, all of us will join hand together to fight in the future uh, for uh, our, our fair share of for the workers and also to uh, subvert this system of capitalism that only exploit workers. Thank you, International Solidarity for this May Day. Thank you, Lee Chuck Yan from the Hong Kong Confederation of Trade Unions. Thank you. Ici c'est Soule Salako, infirmier du premier d'État. Je suis un responsable syndical au Bénin. Je suis là pour donner quelques informations sur la pandémie de la COVID-19. Le Bénin n'a pas un plateau technique qui peut permettre de faire face à des situations alarmantes. On se réjouit pour le moment que le Bénin se retrouve avec 35 cas officiellement à cette date et que ces cas n'ont pas amené les autorités à faire recours à des respirateurs qui sont des appareils spécialisés qui sont utilisés dans ces situations parce que le Bénin n'en dissout pas suffisamment. D'ailleurs, ce n'est que courant ce mois d'avril que le Bénin a obtenu quelques respirateurs qu'il a commandés. Donc si la situation était déjà à la menthe à cette date, on serait déjà dépassé. Donc aujourd'hui, le Bénin compte 35 cas. Sur les 35 cas, le gouvernement nous a dit nous avons 18 cas guéris, 16 sous-traitements et un cas décédé, comme je viens de l'annoncer. La, la situation paraît stable, même si on nous a annoncé qu'il y a trois cas communautaires. Donc, ce n'est pas rien que des cas importés. Trois personnes dans la population ont été déjà contaminées. Et cela donne suffisamment à réfléchir. Des dispositions sont prises, mais ne sont pas comme ce qui se passe dans plusieurs pays. On n'a pas de confinement, ni partiel, ni total. On n'a pas de coup feu. On n'a pas une fermeture des lieux marchands. On a juste une restriction limitée à une quinzaine de villes où on a fermé les mosquées, on a fermé les lieux de cuite et on a limité les déplacements au niveau du transport humain. L'école a été fermée difficilement. Il a fallu des soulèvements au niveau de l'université avec euh, un mort où on, on a tiré à balles. Les, les policiers ont tiré à balles réelles. C'est un étudiant. Plus d'autres réactions venues des organisations qui ont amené le gouvernement finalement à décider de fermer l'école depuis le 30 mars. La situation paraît sous contrôle selon les autorités. On souhaite qu'on ne se retrouve pas dans une situation qui va nécessiter un plateau technique plus important. Sinon, la situation va dépasser le Bénin où les agents de santé ne sont pas en grand nombre sollicités, ne sont pas en grand nombre associés et le plateau technique n'est pas approprié pour y faire face à de pareilles pandémies. Comrades, Kieran Campbell from Ireland here. I'm extremely proud and honoured on behalf of Mandate, the Irish Trade Union of Choice for Retail and Bar Workers, to extend warmest comradely May Day greetings to you, your families and communities, especially during these very difficult times. Now more than ever, as we face into the obvious capitalist onslaught that will arise post this global pandemic crisis, it is our class unity and its potential power that can provide the answers, the means and the society that puts workers, their families and the very earth we all live on first. We must learn from the 2008 global financial crash and its resulting crisis, when the capitalist dictator class seized the moment to unleash crippling austerity programs that impoverish workers, their families and communities, while witnessing the fast accumulations of finance and crass wealth for the few. Hard-won workers' rights, job security, pay, welfare and pensions have been consistently attacked in the interests of capital. Other important social staples of our societies, health and education, have been sacrificed to the whims of capital and its masters. As capitalism flounders and uses occasional light-touch socialist-type principles to counter the current pandemic problems, such as suddenly finding and pouring billions of currency into health and the economy, the capitalist vultures are already encircling what they view will be the ensuing profit-making corpses, just as they did post-2008. They will unashamedly sacrifice people for profit. Already the narrative of this pandemic is changing, as we hear more and more about the need to resurrect the floundering economy and that we will just have to live with the consequences of the virus. Many of you know what these consequences are. It's the choices between life and death. 
We in the left are obliged to counter the capitalist offensive that will be unleashed on our class. Like before, the EU, the World Bank and the IMF will rally the capitalist cause, ensuring that this pandemic will be a profit-making opportunity for business, banking and billionaires. We need to demonstrate there's an alternative, what it looks like and how we can get there. Like capitalism has historically shown, we the working class must seize this opportunity from this crisis. There is no doubt capitalism is severely wounded. It's up to us to make sure those wounds are mortal. There is no going back. That should be our clear message to our people, the working class. Mayday greetings, comrades, and please stay safe. Дорогие товарищи, привет вам из России, из Сибири. Российская власть всегда служила крупному капиталу. Трудящимся доставалось повышение пенсионного возраста, коммунальных платежей и другие антисоциальные законы. Кризис и пандемия только усугубили ситуацию. Многие работодатели, особенно частники, заставляют сотрудников работать, несмотря на режим самоизоляции, не обеспечивают э, необходимый уровень безопасности труда. Или наоборот, отправляют людей в неоплачиваемый урок. Бизнес игнорирует даже те половинчатые законы и решения президента, которые частично направлены в интересах трудящихся. Система здравоохранения встретила пандемию в состоянии глубокого кризиса после сокращения больниц и больничных коек, после введения оплатных услуг и, по сути, отмены бесплатной медицины, одного из главнейших заболеваний Октябрьской революции. Врачам часто не хватает защитных костюмов, многие отказываются работать. Правда, работникам медицины обещаны большие выплаты. Мы посмотрим, сдержит ли власть это обещание. Однако мы помним, как так называемые майские указы 2012 года о повышении зарплат врачам и учителям выполнялись только за счет того, что люди стали интенсивнее работать, а реального повышения зарплат не состоялось. Будет много банкротств, а значит много новых безработных. Кроме того, миллионы людей встречают пандемию без каких-либо накоплений, но зато с кредитами. Власть, конечно, продолжит закручивать полицейские и политические гайки. Как только закончится эпидемия, вернутся к голосованию об изменении Конституции, которая задумана как спектакль всеродной поддержки нового срока для президента Путина. Будут новые политические заключенные, новые разгоны митингов и так далее. Трудящиеся пока реагируют на полномерное ухудшение жизни отдельными стихийными протестами. Но 2019 год стал и годом многих изменений. Профсоюз действия, самый сильный и боевой профсоюз в России, который объединяет медицинских работников, провел много успешных акций протеста. Добился решения многих локальных проблем. Рано или поздно работники нашей страны проснутся и организуются, чтобы вернуть ее себе и чтобы вместе с трудящимися всего мира бороться против власти капитала. Вот вам, товарищ. Месседж дю комитет d'organisation des socialistes internationalistes d'Algérie. Cher camarade, il y a quelques semaines, le 21 février, des millions d'Algériennes et d'Algériens manifestaient dans toutes les villes du pays en réaffirmant leur refus de reconnaître un régime illégitime au regard de la démocratie. Durant 12 mois, le régime a tout fait pour disloquer le mouvement populaire. Il a particulièrement utilisé sa justice. Il a incarcéré des travailleurs, des jeunes, des étudiants, des militants. Et au lieu de faire face à l'immense pénurie des moyens de protection et de prise en charge des patients devant lesquels l'héroïsme des soignants dont certains ont perdu la vie ne suffit pas, le régime poursuit la répression. Il n'y a pas un jour où des militants et de simples citoyens sont convoqués pour répondre de leurs publications sur les réseaux sociaux ou de leurs déclarations politiques. Il y a quelques jours, c'est un membre du bureau politique du Parti des travailleurs qui a été convoqué pour justifier ses écrits. Karim Tabou, premier responsable d'un parti non reconnu, a été lourdement condamné à de la prison ferme pour ses opinions. Le président de l'organisation du rassemblement Action Jeunesse purge en ce moment une lourde peine de prison pour ses déclarations politiques en tant que dirigeant. Il s'agit de la criminalisation de l'action politique Désormais, le régime s'attaque aux journalistes. Tout cela montre que les appels du gouvernement à l'unité de tous n'est qu'une mystification. 
pour le comité d'organisation des socialistes internationalistes, la lutte contre la répression, pour la satisfaction des revendications démocratiques et sociales, est liée à celle pour l'élection d'une assemblée constituante souveraine, pour l'indépendance des organisations syndicales, pour un gouvernement des travailleurs et de leurs organisations émancipées de la tutelle de l'État, pour le Parti ouvrier. Message de Constantin Crétane de Roumanie Chers camarades, en Roumanie, pendant que les personnels de la santé luttaient pour obtenir du matériel de protection et de soins, les différentes cliques qui composent le gouvernement spéculaient précisément sur ces équipements et les aliments. Les prix de ces derniers ont presque doublé dans les trois derniers mois. Actuellement, en Roumanie, nous nous approchons vertigineusement d'un million et demi de salariés qui se trouvent en chômage technique forcé avec 75% du salaire mais plafonné à 2382 lait, 490 euros. Il faut ajouter approximativement un million et demi d'autres citoyens rapatriés de pays européens où ils n'ont plus de travail à cause de la pandémie et qui n'ont maintenant aucune autre ressource de revenus. En cette période de pandémie, en Roumanie comme dans les autres pays, la classe ouvrière est plus opprimée que jamais. Comme nous l'indiquions dans notre appel de soutien, signé par 15 responsables syndicaux à une conférence ouvrière mondiale à Paris en novembre prochain, la solidarité ouvrière internationale doit franchir une nouvelle étape. En avant vers l'international ouvrière, fraternellement, Constantin Crétane. Message du parti Lalite à Maurice. Le parti Lalite à Maurice est heureux de vous transmettre ses salutations à l'occasion de ce meeting international du 1er mai. Pendant la période de confinement, Lalite a initié et coordonné une plateforme commune s'orienter vers un programme de la classe ouvrière pendant le confinement. Nos principales revendications sont Assurer la sécurité alimentaire sur le long terme. Si les propriétaires sucriers n'obéissent pas au gouvernement, leurs terres doivent être réquisitionnées et nationalisées dans ce but. Les ouvriers des services essentiels doivent immédiatement se voir offrir un nouveau contrat, de préférence comme travailleurs d'État. Garantir à chaque famille mauricienne un revenu immédiat et ou un apport en nourriture immédiatement. Un contrôle des prix et, si nécessaire, la mise en place d'un rationnement de la nourriture, du matériel de nettoyage et de cuisine. Le gouvernement doit retirer son projet pour les cliniques et assurances privées. Ces revendications ont été approuvées par sept principales fédérations syndicales, l'Association nationale des femmes et une association de consommateurs mauriciens. Nous sommes en total accord avec le thème choisi par le COI pour ce meeting qui est ce sont les travailleurs, la jeunesse et l'humanité qui doivent être sauvés par les banques et les capitalistes. L'ALIT apporte son soutien à toute initiative qui renforcerait le lien international qui est essentiel dans notre lutte pour le socialisme. Signalons également un message de soutien au meeting international de militants ouvriers de Côte d'Ivoire. Next uh, speakers are coming from Haiti, Afghanistan, Azania, South Africa, Tunisia, the Spanish state, and China. Thank you, comrade. Today, May 1st, some Asian workers are on the street to commemorate the International Day of Workers' Struggle, but also to demonstrate against the corrupt 
anti-popular bourgeois power of Jovenel Moïse, which was imposed by the U.S. imperialism. It is this power, in collision with the economic elite, who plan the return of workers to the factory last Monday, in order to continue to exploit them despite the confinement. Precariousness, misery, obliges thousands of workers without mass were present. Better to die working with the hope of healing a few crumbs than to die confined to your home, they said. Save the country's economy. This is the talk of the moment from the international ruling class. This is the reactionary slogan of the lawyers of the failed capitalist system. This speech is a headlong rush because the leaders of the international economic elite are afraid. They are afraid of the, re the reaction of the working masses, of the working class after the pandemic. They are afraid of the fact that the workers by COVID-19 have discovered the lies, the fraudulent operations. COVID-19 has exposed them in the face of the, of the demands of the masses. They are afraid of the workers' anger at the cost of living, poverty, and the liquidation of public services. This health crisis could lead to anything so as not to leave the field open for workers, unemployed, progressive students, peasants, thousands of families who are confined but who have nothing to eat and to give to the children, to react, at the, to react and to take advantages of the situation, to avoid any reaction of the time of their weakness. The capitalists took the lead. They are trying to regain control. So it is their ideology that continues to dominate international opinion, but not that of the working class. The capitalist system is not a sentimental system that will address the needs of the workers. Their overriding goal is to exploit the labor force to further impoverish them, which will, which will automatically increase their profit margin and make their banks even richer and the poor even poorer. Workers must know without their labor power there will be no production. Without them, the wheel of the capitalist system will stop spinning. This majority force of that workers represent is capable of changing and transforming the world. Asian workers must learn from history and arm themselves ideologically to build their own organization that can support them and the resistance against the U.S. imperialism and defend their own interests. On behalf of the Asian workers, I thank you, comrades, for organizing this important meeting. Thank you. Thank you. کارگران زنان و جوانان اول ماه می روز بین المللی کارگران روز مبارزه طبقه کارگر علیه نظام استبدادی سرمایهداری را برای همه شما تبریک می گویم کارگران و زحمتکشان افغانستان طی 20 سال آخر اشغال امریکا و ناتو نه تنها در حملات هوایی حملات انتحاری و جنگ های خونین کشته شدند بلکه فشار اصلی جنگ فقر
بیکاری و آوارگی را نیز به دوش می کشن. مردم افغانستان هنوز از فاجعه جنگ و اشغال لحان نشده بودند که با فاجعه کوید 19 روبرو شدن دولت کابل که در نتیجه انتخابات افتضاع آمیز و مداخله مستقیم امریکا به میان آمده نمی تواند کوچکترین خدمات را ارائه کند 98 فیصد قربانیان ویروس کرونا را طبقه کارگر و مردم فقیر تشکیل می دهند 60 فیصد مردم زیر خط فقر و از گرسنگی رنج می برند خانواده های کارگر و فقیر اگر از اثر بیماری کرونا از بین نروند بدون شک به علت قرنطینی بدون نان از گرسنگی تلف خواهم شد مسئول این بحران جهانی نظام سرمایهداری هست که به خاطر به دست آوردن سود و منابع اقتصادی محیط زیست را آلوده و ایکوسیستم کره زمین را تخریب ساخته است چون طبقه کارگر قربانی اصلی این فاجعه است پس وظیفه تمام کارگران جهان است که با هم متحد شوند و به خاطر سرنگونی نظام سرمایهداری که مادر اصلی تمام بحران های اقتصادی نابر برابری، بیکاری، جنگ ها، مهاجرت ها و تخریب محیطی زیست است با پا بخیزن. باید با حاکمیت مالکیت خصوصی بر وسایل تولید، توزیع نادلانی ثروت، تولید سلاحای هستوی، سیاست های جنگ و تخریب محیطی زیست پایان داده شود و با ایمار سوسیالیزم و قدرت به دست خود کارگران جهان را انسانی بسازیم در همبستگی چپ رادیکال افغانستان. Professional greeting from back working class and the youth of South Africa. My name is Lubon, and the current I'm the correspondent in Azani of International Youth Alliance for Socialism, and I'm here to discuss the current consequences of the of the of the pandemic that we are facing as a country, which is a COVID-19 outbreak. And the current consequences of the of this pandemic are already dramatic in our country uh, and not only workers and youth are facing the virus but because of the well, uh, because of the lockdown decided by the government led by ANC the black majority is facing hunger and starvation people uh, people police and army have been sent in the streets to supervise and to brutalize the working class and to ensure that the working class is is secured on their houses they are not uh, wandering around the streets of which that will lead uh, to hunger and starvation people have been shot uh, people have been shot by the police and army of which it's the same police who shot who shot the uh, their four striking miners who were only practicing their right to strike eight years ago they were shot and killed by the same police who shot people who are who are outside looking for food 70 more than 70 soldiers have been sent to the working class settlements to continue to brutalize and to kill innocent souls this this clearly gives us the clear indication that the current the current state and the ANC is not ready to to lead this this society it's high time for a broad united front of the organizations of the black working class and youth to impose these emergencies measures to government of the black majority a government of working class and youth <laughs> كما أنها غير مستثناة من هيمنة صندوق النقد الدولي الذي دفعها إلى التراجع عن دعم وإحداث مستشفيات عمومية قادرة على مجابهة أزمة كهذه وهو تقريبا حال كل الدول التي فضحتها الجائحة أطباء يعملون بلا أقنعة بلا قفازات أحيانا الجائحة كشفت أيضا مدى تدهور قطاع الصحة الذي كان في الصف الأول مجابهة الوباء في نفس التواجه الحكومة وفي أشد الأزمات الإنسانية كانت خادمة لرأس المال الظاهر قدمت مساعدات اجتماعية ل 623 ألف عائلة 
وفي المقابل جمعت التبرعات من المواطنين كما اقتطعت أجرة يوم عمل من العمال في الوظيفة العمومية في القطاع العام والقطاع الخاص مكنها من مبلغ حوالي 180 مليون دينار أي أكثر بكثير من المبلغ الذي ستصرفه الحكومة لضعاف الحال بما يعني أن العمال هم من دفع الفاتورة وليست الدولة أزمة كورونا كشفت فساد الليبرالية وخطرها على الإنسانية في المستشفيات التي أهملت تبرع لها العمال وساهم في مساعدتها على الوقوف في المقابل تدعم الدولة رأس المال بمنطق أنه ماكينة الإنتاج وأنه من سيضمن الوظائف في المستقبل ويجب على الجميع تحمل تبعية ذلك ونحن قريبين من يوم 1 ماي يوم العمال وحي كل عمال العالم وخاصة عمال قطاع الصحة وأدعو إلى وحدة عمالية عالمية للتصدي لوباء فساد الليبرالية المتوحشة التي تعيش آخر أيامها وتريد تمديد صلاحيتها عبر تصدير أزمتها للعمال الذين يقفون اليوم ويتصدون لهمجيتها التي لا تنتهي وشكرا Desde Cataluña y el Estado español estamos sufriendo, como en la mayoría de los países, la grave pandemia del coronavirus. Aquí la pandemia es cruel, como en otros muchos otros países. El coronavirus ataca y mata a miles de personas, la mayoría personas mayores internadas en residencias. Todos sabemos que el coronavirus no es el responsable de los recortes en la sanidad, que desde el 2008 se han hecho en todo el Estado español. Todos sabemos que el coronavirus no tiene la culpa del paro, de la precariedad laboral y del empobrecimiento de la clase trabajadora. Y ahora están los despidos legales masivos, los eres y los eros, miles de trabajadores en las colas del paro, miles de familias sin sustento económico. Y otro tema que va a llegar. Se oyen muchas voces que nos dicen que ahora, que el planeta, la Tierra, la atmósfera, necesitaba de un parón de la economía, para volver a estar bien, a respirar. Que toda la población tendrá que hacer una reflexión de cómo vivimos en el planeta Tierra. Y es cierto, muy cierto, pero la contaminación es producto del sistema capitalista y hay que tenerlo muy claro. En el Estado español el gobierno del PSOE, que gobierna con Podemos, quieren volver a la misma política que ejercieron cuando murió Franco. Porque en el Estado español murió Franco en el 75, pero no murió el franquismo. El franquismo se apuntaló con unos pactos, los pactos de la Moncloa. Tampoco se dignificó los miles de asesinados y enterrados en cunetas, ni se han juzgado los militares y torturadores de la dictadura. Y desde entonces, todos esos 47 años, seguimos con políticas antiobreras, con pactos entre la derecha, la izquierda y los sindicatos, que hay que decirlo, han vivido muy bien a base de subvenciones gubernamentales. ¿Cómo iban estos a luchar con y por la clase obrera? Y ahora vuelven a las mismas andadas. El gobierno de Pedro Sánchez propone nuevos pactos, Pacto para reconstruir el capitalismo, para hacer pagar a la clase obrera la crisis que nos han generado. Y ahora es hora de decir que no, pues no. Los trabajadores y las clases populares debemos hacer nuestros propios pactos, el pacto de clase, que obligue realmente a que esta crisis la pague quienes hasta ahora no han pagado nada, los del IBEX 35 y las grandes empresas, que la crisis la pague el capital. El capitalismo es el responsable también de las guerras de Oriente Medio y otros lugares como Siria, que han provocado que millones de refugiados intenten llegar a Europa, igual que miles de africanos que intentan llegar para sobrevivir y buscando una vida mejor. La clase obrera, la clase trabajadora no tiene banderas, pues se sufre lo mismo trabajando en fábricas o limpiando escaleras en Pekín, París, Barcelona o Berlín. La clase trabajadora, la clase obrera tiene una bandera, la bandera roja de Lenin, la bandera roja de la sangre de los trabajadores y de los militantes muertos por todas partes del mundo desde hace ya demasiado tiempo. El capitalismo no se puede reformar, no se puede transformar, no se puede humanizar. Para que las luchas triunfen, para que sean victoriosas, hay que organizarlas. Organizarlas desde las fábricas, los barrios, las ciudades e internacionalmente. En este inusual 1 de mayo, 
2020, gritemos juntos que la pandemia más grave que sufrimos en el capi es el capitalismo. Organicémonos en una internacional obrera. La única salida para liberarnos es destruir el capitalismo y construir una sociedad sin explotación todos juntos. ¡Viva el 1 de mayo! ¡Viva la Internacional Obrera! Sisters and brothers, China has more than 288 million domestic migrant workers who leave their hometown to work in cities in 2019. Many of them got haven't got decent work in their life. Despite the high economic growth, infringement of labor laws are still prevalent in industrial areas in cities. For instance, in South, the Guangdong province leads the country in provincial GDP volume over 30 years. But in this area, we still see that poverty wages are pushing Chinese workers to bend themselves towards working conditions. One of the most concerned issues to Chinese workers in recent years is the non-payment of pension premium, which are legally required. As more and more workers edged towards retirement age, they realized that there is no pension benefit that they could, they could enjoy. They would need to continue working beyond the age of 50, 60, or even 70 years old. Many workers have lost their rights to retirement protection after having contributed to the development of cities for years. Many workers and labor activists have been harassed in China or even detained in fighting for labor rights. ACFTU is not in place to help. Sisters and brothers, the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic just further demonstrates how fragile workers' livelihood are. One of the immediate efforts is the decrying and cutting of production order from abroad, causing factories to operate only to a limited extent. As we understand, smaller suppliers are experiencing the largest hit, with workers' wages delayed or being forced to take unpaid leaves for weeks or even months. Local policies aimed at stabilizing business environments are heavily detailed towards the interests of enterprises, but not workers. Sisters and brothers, workers all over the world have been struggling. We need to connect each other in the globalized economy and fight for our future. The next and last speakers for our International Media Rally are comrades from the Philippines, Burkina Faso, Great Britain, Hungary, and Bangladesh. After the last speaker, comrade Daniel Lakshin will conclude our rally. The COVID pandemic has exposed all the ills and contradictions of capitalism. The state has intervened massively in society to contain the infection and maintain the social fabric. Still, the workers and the poor are disproportionately bearing the burden of the pandemic. The lockdown has put millions temporarily jobless on a no work, no pay policy. The poor cannot earn a living as everyone is forced to stay at home. Assistance to the poor was not enough for everyone. So political patronage and wanton discrimination reign supreme. The health system is overwhelmed by the scale of the contagion since public health provision has suffered from bad budget cuts and private hospitals are out of reach of the masses. Finally, the government has exploited the pandemic to further restrict civil liberties and suppress democratic rights. An iron peace policy has dominated over a public health response. Thus, the number of people arrested for violating the lockdown has far exceeded the number of people tested for COVID. 
The situation in the Philippines is no different from other countries where authoritarianism is gaining ground. A global re recession, if not a depression, is looming. As in all episodes of capitalist crisis, the working class will be hard hit as the capitalist class will pass on the sacrifices to the poor. The plight of the working class is deteriorating as capitalism struggles to recover from COVID pandemic and the economic crisis. But the present conjuncture is also an opening to reimagine a radical restructuring of society where the needs of the people, not profit, comes first. Workers hold no nostalgia for the old normal of neoliberal capitalism characterized by insecure work, cheap wages, permanent joblessness, privatized services, and lack of protection. Instead, the working class must spearhead the framing of the new normal as a system where workers are valued for their wealth-creating labor and the people enjoy the right things necessary for a decent life, like full employment, a living wage, universal health care, quality education, social protection, and a clean environment. A voice in their workplace and society as a whole, among others. The proper response to COVID pandemic should put needs of the workers and the poor first. The following four demands are just the most immediate but are necessary to transition to a new normal of workers' place first. Number one, sufficient aid for all. Number two, aid should be beyond the period of the lockdown. Number three, safety for workers returning to work. Number four, humane and not militarized response to the crisis. The order for people to stay at home will be problematic since the people are going hungry for lack of assistance and they are treated beneficiaries of philanthropy act instead of claim holders of the right to aid in times of crisis. Partido Mangagawa, Labor Party Philippines, May 1, 2020. Long live the working class. Mabuhay! Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Salut à toutes les camarades du monde entier. Alors moi je m'appelle Zongo Sibri Ablasi. Je suis de l'Afrique de l'Ouest tout précisément au Burkina Faso, le pays de Thomas Sankara. Alors, je fais ce vidéo au nom de toutes les camarades du Burkina Faso, au nom de la génération consciente du Burkina Faso, pour dire qu'il y a quelque chose de très grave. Et cette chose, c'est quoi Et notre seul problème en Afrique, c'est le capitalisme. Ce système capitalisme qui nous implique, qui nous envoie des choses que nous, on ne veut pas. Qui nous propose des produits que nous, on ne veut pas. Et c'est le même capitalisme qui fabrique les maladies. Et c'est le même capitalisme encore qui fabrique les produits, c'est-à-dire les remèdes, les médicaments, pour revenir encore nous vendre avec des prix chers qu'on ne peut même pas payer. Et ces mêmes produits encore vont créer encore des effets pour nous tuer, pour nous détruire. Non. S'il vous plaît, vous, vous, vous, vous, vous les capitalistes là, nous vous accomplissons. Donc, on adresse ce message à tout le monde entier, à tous nos camarades de lutte du monde entier, qui sont dans tous les cinq continents, de se lever qu'ensemble, on va lutter contre le système capitaliste. Le système capitaliste est plus fort que l'Afrique. Le système capitaliste est plus fort qu'un individu. Mais il faut que l'ensemble de tous les peuples qu'on puisse lutter avec ce système. Parce que ce même système crée, il crée, il crée, il crée de, de, de, de, de, du chômage, il crée la guerre, et puis il crée des maladies. 
Non. Thomas Sankara n'était pas d'accord avec ça, avec le capitalisme, avec l'impérialisme. Non, à part. Ça suffit. Vous volez nos matières premières, vous volez nos richesses. Hein? Et mais comment vous voulez que l'Afrique se développe Ce n'est pas possible. Et nous, la génération consciente, nous, les camarades du Burkina Faso, on prend l'engagement de lutter contre le système. Alors, camarades du monde entier, nous sommes ensemble et on espère qu'on va gagner le combat. Alors, je fais ce vidéo pour vous dire que nous, on est prêts pour le combat, on est prêts pour la lutte, on est prêts pour faire dégager le capitalisme. Capitalisme dégage, capitalisme dégage, capitalisme dégage. Comrades, brothers and sisters, after the COVID-19 epidemic comes to pass, and pass it will, the priority of multinational corporations and the banks will be ensuring the wealthy get back their losses as soon as possible. There is nothing new with this. The only difference is the rich may now suffer some level of collateral damage, whilst before they just gorged on the suffering of others caused by capitalist austerity. The systematic problems of capitalism are not going to go away. The reality is, within a very short period of time, when the horror of COVID-19 passes, the greed and nepotism of the money classes will return. And as always, the poor will be the ones who pay for bailouts to rescue the banks, billionaires and tax exiles. We have two viruses at work, COVID-19 and viral capitalist propaganda, offering fake support to those who need it most. Poverty, inequality and injustice will not be addressed by these vulture capitalists and the governments they control, despite daily news briefings to the contrary. These issues will not be alleviated and resolved until we rid ourselves of the parasitic class who put profits before the needs of humanity. Here in the UK, we can expect no help from the newly elected leader of the Labour Party. He has already committed himself to working hand in hand with Boris Johnson. His politics are the embodiment of opportunism. He denounces capitalism only to embrace it. His conduct so far is the natural expression of a man who is masquerading as a socialist. A man who will do nothing other than appeal to the ruling class to be more general. Our response needs to be made with an eye to the future. The task before us is to unite workers across the world and encourage them to wield collective power rather than simply sit back and be grateful for the leftovers of their oppressors. Change does not come through some sudden enlightenment of the rich. It comes through the exercise of the power of the masses. It's through our international campaigns and social movements that the true ideals of socialism will spread and people will come to realise the power of working class solidarity. Together, we can bring an end to free market fundamentalism, neoliberalism and federal capitalism and return power to where it truly belongs, with the proletariat, and away from the reactionary capitalist system that inevitably leads to regression and exploitation. Solidarity and stay safe. Chers camarades, je vous salue à l'occasion du 1er mai de notre réunion en ligne comme ça. Euh, vous savez, euh, la situation en Hongrie pour le moment pas si grave, moins de 11 000 personnes en quarantaine, en domicile, moins de 3 000 en hôpital. Mais il y a des années que le gouvernement social a annulé 10 000 dollars hôpitaux. Et euh, l'actuel a fait la même chose avec 3 000 et cela ne s'arrête pas. Maintenant, le gouvernement libère 30 000 de lits, euh, soi-disant pour les malades de coronavirus qui ne seront jamais rétablis. Et en plus, en jetant dehors des euh, occupants de ces lits vraiment gravement malades, vieux et jeunes paralysés ou non, que leur famille s'occupe d'eux à domicile et sans aide. Euh, en fait, le gouvernement suit toujours le projet euh, européen pour détruire euh, la santé publique. 
elle est d'attaque continue aussi contre les viteurs de travail. Désormais, avec le cadre de travail libre de, de 24 mois, qui veut dire qu'on peut travailler 10 heures par jour, les heures supplémentaires ne sont pas comptées, on va les comptabiliser dans deux ans. Donc, le bilan sera fait seulement dans deux ans. En même temps, les licenciements continuent. Déjà, 20% euh, des travailleurs sont au chômage, euh, sans compter bien sûr le secteur informel qui est déjà sans travail depuis des mois. Il y a aussi une nouvelle euh, qui concerne les banques et la commerce. Il y a une euh, loi qui s'appelle euh, euh, taxe de virus. Mais justement, le problème que ce soit euh, la clientèle, donc les travailleurs qui doivent payer le prix, euh, nous aurons une inflation comme la flèche. Et quant aux banques, le système était déjà jusqu'ici aussi le plus cher en Europe. Et par la suite, une autre taxe d'auparavant. Donc la situation euh, s'aggrave de jour à jour. Et euh, on ne sait pas si euh, les syndicats vont agir ou pas. Maintenant, avec le confinement, ce n'est pas si facile. Mais euh, je vous souhaite quand même bonne santé, bonne lutte. Et euh, vive le 1er mai et la place ouvrière. Brothers and sisters, friends and comrades, my name is Daniel Blepstein. I'm one of the two coordinators, along with Carmen Nambiat Vasudevan, of the International Workers' Committee Against War and Exploitation, Against Precarious Work, and for the Workers International. It is a fact that the crisis which humankind is facing today is the worst crisis for tens and tens of years. As far as we know, the COVID-19 virus is a result of a process of nature. But the tremendous expansion of this virus the world over, the hundreds of thousands of deaths already officially announced, they are not the result of a process of nature. 
they are the result of the lack of research on this kind of coronavirus over the past 20 years. They are the results of hospital closures and the lack of medical services and the lack of doctors the world over. They are the result of the greed for profit. Many speakers before me highlighted the fact that the bosses and government are seizing the opportunity of this coronavirus to launch a new waves of attacks against the working class and the democratic rights. Since the beginning of the pandemic, millions of workers have been laid off. Anger is spreading throughout the world. Millions of people are dying of starvation. All these phenomena do not derive from the laws of the nature. Different speaker before me accuse under a right the destructive policies which have been implemented for years and years the world over by all the governments that are at the service of the capitalist system, which means the system based upon the private ownership of the means of production. Why are we gathering today? In the first, in this moment of the 1st of May, 2020, we must express the fact that we cannot accept the idea that this pandemic simply was our fate. We cannot accept the false idea according to which everybody is on the same level facing the pandemics. The idea that Workers and bosses, rich and poor, are on the same level facing the pandemic, because this is not true. On the contrary, everything that is happening today in every country shows that through this pandemic, the struggle between working class and capitalist class is becoming sharper every day. My comrade Krista, who spoke before me, explained what is going on in my own country. Can you imagine that in France, which is one of the richest countries of the world, the pandemic started more than two months ago, but till now, till this day, 1st of May, there are not enough masks, not enough test kits, not enough protective equipment for all the population. And even the government, which is lying and lying, has to recognize that even in two, three, four weeks, all this, everything which is needed, the test, the mask, the protective material, will continue to be absent. The first decision that the French government took just after the beginning of the pandemic was to ask the parliament to vote a bill which give 343 billion euros to the banking system in order to help the capitalists. 343 billion euros. This huge amount of money is almost the equivalent of the yearly budget of France. And this bill has been adopted the 19th of March by all the members of the parliament from the far right to the far left. There is one condition for the capitalists to receive these funds is that they must give the proof that they will to organize the downsizing of their plants and that they are going to lay off their work. Meanwhile, the government gave five euros to each person requesting food assistance. And there are four or ten million people just now in France who are requesting for food assistance. But in the same time, the fund for the banks and the capitalists has gone up to more than 400 
billion euros. This is not specific to the French situation. This is a situation that is well known by the rock of the world over. Well, all the government during, during the past 30 or 40 years bent to the dictates of the IMF and the European Union. They bent and accepted to close the hospitals to attack the social security and the healthcare system. They accepted to make cuts in the public services, in the public budget, so as to help the bosses make more profits. In the past 40 years in France, those policies against the working class, against the public services, have been implemented by so-called right-wing government, but also so-called left-wing government. And today, all the representative in the parliament claiming to be representative of the interest of the working class, or at least representative of the so-called left political parties, agreed to give these 343 billion euros to the bosses and the banks. And this leads to another serious issue. Many people on, in my country, and I understand that it is true also for other countries, many people in my country are now calling for a kind of national unity even for a kind of national unity government to deal with the pandemic. We know the story. When the bosses speak about national unity, workers have to look in their pockets and check if their money has not been stolen. When the bosses speak about national unity, you can be sure that what they mean is that everybody must gather together to defend the bosses' interests and their profits. That's why our political party, the Independent and Democratic Workers' Party in France, is advocated the necessity to prepare the ground for a working class unity government opposed to the so-called national unity government. Our party has stated publicly that a working class unity government is needed to implement the emergency measures that are required by the situation. This means forbidding layoffs. It means maintaining all the workers' wages and salaries. It means requisitioning the 343 billion euros given to the banks and the capitalists and using this huge amount of money to enact and the emergency measures concerning jobs, healthcare, schools, and public services. It means nationalizing without any compensations, the banks, and all the manufacturing sector that would be made to produce massively the face masks, testing kits, and all the other means for protection. It means nationalizing to plan production and ensure the free distribution of food and so on. We know that in every country, such emergency measures should be on the agenda. But it means that the working class must fight back to impose this kind of emergency measures and not the kind of measures that are being implemented implemented for the only purpose to protect the interests of the bosses and the banks. We understand that for comrades coming from poor countries, it's hard to believe that even in the richest countries, everything is lacking for the defense of the working class. This is what expression of the unity of the class struggle the world over. In poor countries, in rich countries, in imperialist countries and in oppressed nations, all the workers are suffering the consequences of the deep crisis of this capitalist system. Is it possible to find a solution that meets the vital, vital needs of the working class? Yes, it is possible. But such a solution 
must be independent of the bosses and the bourgeoisie. Such a solution needs a, a condition, a prerequisite, which is to preserve the independence of the working class and its organization. Yes, the priority should be to do everything possible to save humankind. The means exist, the wealth exists, the resources exist to provide for the 8 billion people living on this planet so that they have the possibility to escape from starvation, the possibility to afford health care, the possibility of schooling for all the children. We know that the resources exist, but we know also that they have been confiscated by a tiny minority of exploiters and speculators. Gathered today, we know that we have in common, more in common, that we could possibly have in common with the capitalists and the governments in every country. The story of the working class movement is that of real attempts to come together and build together. We must have in memory the fact that a little more than one and a half century ago. The first international, which was called the International Working Men Association, was proclaimed in London, Britain, gathering most of the existing currents and tendency of the working class movement. The names of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels are well known the world over. But in the framework of this first international, a lot of people did not share the views of many other, for example, about what was meant by socialism or working class emancipation. Many of them were trade unionists. Many of them were members of very different socialist groups and groupings. Some of them were more or less close to the anarchists. But these different currents, this different tendency, whatever their disagreements, were a member of the same international association because they understood that the interest of the working class and the interest of the capitalist class were absolutely opposed. As a, as a consequence, all of them share the view that the working class organizations must defend and preserve their independence. They share also the view that if the working class is to defend itself, it must champion the struggle for every single demand as limited it may be. They understood also that the working class must embrace the demands of all the oppressed sectors facing national oppression, facing racist oppression, facing the oppression of women and gender oppression, and all forms of oppression and discrimination. People belonging to this International Working Men's Association over a century and a half ago share another point of view. And that is that the working class had, had not only the duty to fight back for the economic demands, but that the workers had to fight back to free themselves from the capitalist system. They understood that the most important demand must be to take the power into the hands of the workers in order to reorganize the whole society and the whole economy on a new basis. They understood that the socialization of the means of production would make it possible for the wealth to belong to those who produce the wealth, meaning the class of the producers, the working class. Of course, 
This was one century and a half ago, but we feel that today, opening the way for the building of a Workers International is more relevant than ever. We know that the labor movement, the working class movement, has a long history that has gone through a lot of struggles, sometimes concluded with victories and sometimes concluded with defeats. We know that the working class movement has gone through a lot of crisis and also a lot of disillusions. But we feel that we have no choice but to chart this course. The future of humankind depends on the ability of the working class to preserve itself from the barbarism. And barbarism means the barbarism of the capitalist system, which leads it towards destruction under the name of globalization. But what, what does mean globalization in the mouth of capitalists? It means the right to plunder and dislocate. It means the right to drive millions from their homes on the road to exile, only to become prisoners in jail or in camps or to drown in the sea. The working class must gather its forces. The time is come, is coming, the time is coming to go forward for the workers international. Whatever the differences among us, we understand that we have a common fate. We understand that we are fighting against the same enemy, against those governments and those bosses who are out to increase the profits to develop the armament economy, producing more and more weapons, provoking more and more wars against the people and building more and more walls to divide them. But we have to understand also, as the comrades from Philippines said before me, that the prison crisis is also an opportunity to open the way to millions and millions of people. But let's be clear about the purpose of the struggle. The purpose of the struggle cannot be to imagine a new kind of capitalism, a more human one, a more a gentle one. The purpose cannot be, cannot be more limited to wage the struggle against the so-called neoliberalism. We must say clearly that those responsible for the current crisis are not people who would have mismanaged the capitalist system. The capitalist system itself is guilty the private ownership of means of production is guilty. We know that the working class and the oppressed peoples throughout the world are facing hard time. And we are conscious that we will face other times in the next period. We understand that this huge crisis means a massive destruction of productive forces and first of all, the massive destruction of the main productive forces that is the labor of the exploited worker. Yes, the capitalist class will do everything possible to make the workers pay for the crisis. They have already started making a lot of speeches to say that the situation is feeding a global debt, which is growing bigger and bigger. They are explaining that it will be necessary to reimburse this debt, that the people, the workers will have to shoulder the repayment of the debt. We understand that this capitalist system is condemned. The present crisis is a demonstration that there is no way for this system to serve humankind. 
but more than everything we understand, that whatever are the differences among us, whatever the color of the skin, whatever the differences of languages, whatever the differences of beliefs, whatever the differences of political, social, religious, and uh, national tradition, men and women, youth and elder, we are part, the world over, of one single working class. That is why respecting the difference among us, we have the responsibility to make one step forward of a road on the road of a new Workers International. Comrade Nambiat Vasudevan reminded us at the beginning of this rally that we met in Mumbai, India in a very successful conference at the end of 2016. In this conference, many working class activists took part, many of whom were involved in the trade union movement in their countries. Other delegates were more involved in a political activity. Many participants in this conference did not claim to belong to any specific political current. Others didn't hide their political origin. For some of them linked to the socialist tradition, for some other to the communist one or for some other, if they were members of the Trotsky's current, which is my case, or other currents of the workers' movement. But all of us, we decided together to launch this new framework, respecting the diversity of this gathering on the common ground of the fight for class independence and for the workers' international. Comrade Vasudevan reminded also us of the decision that we took some months ago to convene a new world conference against war and exploitation and for workers international. This conference was supposed to take place in Paris next November 2020. At this moment, nobody can say if we will be able to organize this world conference at the moment when it has been scheduled, because nobody knows what the situation will be in the next month. And nobody knows if it will be possible for camera throughout the world to travel and to meet together. But we help it take the solemn pledge at this public rally on the 1st May, the 1st of May 2020, that if it is not in November, it will be in December. And if it will not in December, it will be in 2021. But this conference against war and exploitation will take place. It is on the agenda. Yes, the time has come for the workers to fight back together, shoulder to shoulder, in each and every country. The time has come to go ahead on the path for the Workers International in order to fight for the, reorgan for the reorganization of the whole society and the whole economy. To answer to the demands of the majority of the people. Before concluding this rally, I want to thank all the speakers from the different continents and different countries. I want also address a special thank to the tens and tens of comrades who helped organizing this event. The comrade who helped us to overcome the, the, the, the lockdown, to overcome the situation where everybody should be isolated in his house. I want to thank the tens and tens of comrades who helped the technical staff, the translators, 
uh, to all of them who did that at the service of the working class, let's say a huge thank you. Comrades and friends, brothers and sisters, let us gather and support the call for a world conference. All of you attending this rally are invited to join us. Please be part of the process. Sign the appeal for the Working Class World Conference. Long live Mede. Long live the working class. Long live the Workers International. Workers of the world unite. Oh. Uh -huh.